two guys that dot their I's and cross their T's when it comes to discipline, accountability, and toughness, mental and physical. And nowhere does that show up more than in how they ran the football this year at Michigan yeah. State. Under John L. Smith, this was a spread offense. They were ninth in the Big Ten in rushing last year. This year, a huge difference between Javon Ringer and J.U. Kalkrick. Those two guys ran for over 2,000 yards, 27 touchdowns. They are a Big Ten power running football team. They'll be tested tonight because Boston College comes in, the number one run defense in the country. And they have been terrific against the run all year long. Holly Rowe will work the sidelines for us. And Holly, Michigan State comes in here short a few players. That's right. They had to suspend five players this last week, either due to rules violations or academic issues. Most importantly, they will miss their starting defensive end, a fifth-year senior, senior Jonas St. Deep. He's a pass rush specialist, guys. He's, they call him the sack master, and he leads the NCAA in fumbles force. He's disruptive. But Coach Mark D'Antonio said we will just have to move forward. His concern is their depth. They will have plays, he says, of 30 or more yards where they have to run down the field six tonight. He said if we can be fresh in the fourth quarter, that will be a huge issue, so they will use even more players than normal. But at the end of the day, guys, he said having to suspend those players will not be the reason why we win or lose this game. All right, Holly, it's the Champ Sports Bowl from Orlando. Stay with us. The kickoff is next. What's up, man? Hey, dude. Having a place to store perishable food items. Priority number 43. <laughs> Having a place to store perishable anatomy class items. Priority number one. Sorry, man. Get the money you need with a Monticello student loan. Use it for education-related expenses. And the best part is, you can pay it back after you graduate. When saving, scholarships, and federal loans aren't enough, it's the smart way to borrow. Apply with a cosigner and you could get a better rate. Monticello Student Loans, when education is priority number one. Call 888-727-2926 or log on to 30monticelloloans.com. Hi, I'm Rob Broderson, the Vice President of Marketing with Champ Sports. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for watching the Champ Sports Bowl. We're proud to sponsor the only game matching up the Big Ten and ACC. We take pride in our sports heritage, and we're honored to share our passion and excitement with college football fans everywhere. On behalf of Champ Sports and the 8,200 employees across North America, we'd like to wish you and your family a happy and healthy new year. And thanks for watching the Champ Sports Bowl. Enjoy the game! Welcome back to the Champ Sports Bowl game and coming up on our show tonight we're going to take a look and a listen at possibly the best performance of the entire bowl season. We'll get ready to tell you how Matt Ryan will get ready for the NFL draft and we'll dig up the lost footage from Morgantown with Todd's taste of the town and believe me I have tasted that stuff. It is great. You'll love it. Well here are the weather conditions. It's it's tough here. It's 80 degrees. Partly cloudy, Boston 37, East Lansing, it is snowing, and 31. Yikes. <laughs> nice to be in Florida. You can dress like that yeah, here but you know comfortably. What? He'd probably dress like that in East Lansing yes, he tonight, would. too. But he'd be in the hospital around midnight. <laughs> Michigan State will get the ball first. Billy Bennett to kick it away. Right away, we're going to see Devin Thomas, number five. I think one of the real difference makers in this game. Just had a, an outstanding season. Led the Big Ten in total yards as a receiver and a returner. 28-1 per return. Doing a smart thing by stacking the two return guys, not yeah. showing which side he's going to be on. Thomas from the four. As a seam, broke a tackle. 40. 50. His own man throwing him a block, slowed him down, and Thomas to the 18-yard line on the return. 
Jamie Silva, the All-American safety, saved a touchdown on a 78-yard return. Well, this guy has done it all season. A great returner. They stacked the returners, and Boston College ended up kicking right to him. Then no control on the coverage lanes for Boston College. Thomas never touched until he crossed the 50-yard line. Jamie Silva with a touchdown-saving tackle, but nobody near Devin Thomas all the way down inside the 20-yard line. What a great way to start a ball game. Boy. First and 10 from the other team's 18. Colcrick is the running back, and he'll get the carry. Colcrick weaves his way inside the 15 with the Samsung Mobile starting lineup. Here is Colcrick to tell us about that Michigan State offense. Heading up the offense for the Spartans is quarterback Brian Hoyer, a true gunslinger. And in the backfield, we have Thunder and Lightning, Javon Ringer, and myself. At wide receivers, we have primetime Deion Curry and showtime Devin Thomas. On the front line, we have senior Peter Clifford, Kenny Shane, and the guy who gets more touches than any running back, John Masters. Ringer now checks in as the deep man in the eye. Hoyer, the quarterback. Ringer on the toss. And dragged down in the backfield at the 19-yard line. Brady Smith got penetration to tell us about the Boston College defense. Here's NBC's Tim Russer. For the Boston College defense, the big battleship on the line, 325-pound Lon Brace. At linebacker, the four-star general, Jolon Dunbar. At safety, the secretary of defense, Jamie Hitman Silver. Florida's not a red state or a blue state. It is eagle country. And Tim's son Luke goes to Boston College. He's a big eagle fan. Hoyer thrown over the middle. Wide open. Touchdown. Hit his tight end, Kellen Davis, who found a seam down the middle and a perfect throw from Hoyer for 18 yards and a score. Well, this guy has been on a hot streak down the stretch. 28 receptions coming into the game. 14 of them in the last Boston College would account for him a little more significantly, but he ran right down the middle of the BC defense into the end zone. Kind of target you quarterbacks love, too. 6'6", 246. Brett Swenson with the point after. And Michigan State takes only a minute 37 off the first quarter clock before it gets the first score of the game. Well, here's Kellen Davis. Now he's six foot six. He's going to run right down the middle of the field, and you're going to see the safety, Jamie Silva, flatten out away from him. And Jolon Dunbar, number 40, just doesn't get underneath the route enough. The other safety can't get over in time to help. It's a nice read and a throw by Hoyer, but that was too easy. Throw into the big target down the middle of the defense. Well, she can understand why the pass defense might look at Devin Thomas. He's caught 75 right. balls. So that time they used him as a decoy, and Davis, with those guns, was wide open. Well, and again, that's the thing about him is he is such a big target, has really come on late in the year, and he's going to play a lot on defense tonight. He's going to be one of those guys that takes some reps at the defensive end position for the missing St. Deep. I think his future is on the offensive wow. side of the ball, though, wouldn't you? <laughs> I don't know. Those defensive ends at the next level get paid yeah, pretty good, too. They do. They probably, <laughs> uh, probably earn just a touch more than tight ends. Robinson on the return for BC, and he's up to the 28-yard line with the Samsung Mobile starting lineup. Here again, Tim Russer to tell us about that BC offense. For the Boston College offense, the president of this team, he's headed for the NFL, Matty Iceman Ryan. A great tailback with terrific hands, Dre Callender. The Ramblin' Man, tight end Ryan Purvis. And anchoring the line, number 77, Big Goss. Tim, thank you very much. I'm sure I will see you at one of the Boston College basketball games <laughs> upcoming. Been there every time I have. Collender, the running back. Tremendous pass receiver. 75 catches this year. He'll get a carry this time, and Michigan State swallows him up the line for the Spartan defense. The introduction from safety, Travis Key. 
Starting up front with the defensive line. We're led by senior defensive end, Irwin, G-Ball, Baldwin. Back to the linebacking core. We're led by senior middle linebacker, Caleb, Baby Mad Dog, Thornhill. And his understudy, freshman All-American, Greg Jones. Back to the secondary. We're led by senior strong safety, our partner in crime, senior hair banger, Nehemiah Ward. Matt Ryan goes to the shotgun with two tight ends. Throws out in the flat, and it's off of Purvis's hands. He's the starter at that position. Had a great year with 52 catches. In fact, they have four guys who have caught more than 50 balls this year as Ryan has spread it around. And, Todd, he's done it without a, a really yeah. go-to guy, without a big-time speed receiver. Yeah, I mean, his go-to guy is his tailback working against linebackers on option routes, which we'll see a lot tonight with Callender. But he doesn't have a speed receiver on the outside, a guy who can really threaten the defense the way like Michigan State does with a Devin Thomas. And there's Davis with two sacks this year in limited time as a pass-rushing defensive end. Davis gets a little pressure. Ryan throws complete up to the 42. No. Brandon Robinson went to the ground trying to make the catch, but the official in there in a hurry saying the ball hit the ground. Well, two pass plays in a row. Michigan State able to generate a little pressure for Matt Ryan. Collapsing the pocket, he steps up. The ball is thrown low. Hard to tell from that angle whether the ball bounced or not, but a, a pretty quick call by the officials and not a lot of protesting by Gunnell. Uh, he must have dropped it because yeah. the ball was, was off the ground when it right. got to him. Ayers will kick to Thomas. Did a nice job and really banged it. And Thomas on the run pushed back inside his 20-yard line. Takes it at the 18. Well, that was almost disastrous for Boston College. Two block kicks the last time they played against Virginia Tech in the championship game. Got in the way with that one. Football fans, be part of the action with Champ Sports Bowl Bingo. If you don't have a game card already, log on to champsports.com backslash bingo and print out yours now. Then stay tuned throughout this ACC Big Ten battle for your chance to win a new 2008 Mitsubishi Eclipse GT just by following the action. Watch for plays that match the ones on your Bowl Bingo card and cross out the boxes as you go. Get five in any direction or fill the card and you're good to enter the random drawing for the Eclipse GT. Or submit a non-bingo card to enter a second chance drawing for other prizes. So log on, print the card, and watch the action for your chance to drive off in style. The number one car information website, Edmunds.com, presented Mazda with a little problem. They named not one, but five different Mazdas to their editor's most wanted list. So how do you put all five on a pedestal? With one great event. Zoom, zoom. Announcing Mazda's most wanted sales event. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Don't miss 0.0% APR financing on the 08 Mazda 3, Mazda 6, CX-7, and CX-9. Learn about all the most wanted Mazdas at Mazda.Edmunds.com. Hurry, this year-end event ends January 2nd. When I was just a little girl, I asked my mother, what will I be? Will I be pretty? And here's what she said to me. The XPS-1, powered by an Intel Core 2 dual processor. Dell, yours is here. City, Illinois versus USC, New Year's Day at 4.30 Eastern on ABC. ESPN's college football presentation of the Champs Sports Bowl is available on ESPN HD, presented by Pioneer Kuro HDTV. They're happy on the Michigan State sideline as they already lead in this game 7-0. Their season got off to a 4-0 start. Along the way, they became the first team to win six straight games at Notre Dame, but they lost five of the next six 
by a total of only 28 points. They won their next two to go to a, their first bowl game since 2003. Hoyer to throw again incomplete. Wow. Looked like a lot of contact yeah, and the sure flag did. comes in. Once again they were throwing for Davis and Joe Long Dunbar looked like he was all over. Uh, see I think Boston College has two major matchup problems in this game. One is outside with Devin Thomas a big physical receiver at 6'2", 218 pounds. The other one with the tight end Davis at 6'6", 250 pounds. The strength of the Boston College defense is their linebacking core, and Joe Lon Dunbar is the leader of that group, but I'm not sure they've seen many tight ends with this kind of ability to run. And you see Dunbar creating the collision as the ball's in the air, and that's pass interference. Dunbar outweighed by that tight end by 25, 30 pounds. Ringer is in there with Pritchett, the blocking back. Almost all these blocking backs, by the way, converted linebackers, guys that probably played a lot of fullback in high school. They did not have a fullback in the previous offense. And Silva makes the tackle on Javon Ringer. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about guys that maybe looked at being third-team linebackers running down on kickoff and say, you want to be a fullback? Yeah, I'll play fullback. I'll lead block and, and get on the field, get a few passes thrown to me. Look at, this is the matchup of the game. When Michigan State has the ball, their ability to run the football against that BC rush defense. And again, I'm not sure BC has faced a running football team as physical or as strong as this Michigan State team. Only two teams went over 100 yards against them this year. Straight up the middle, this is Kulkrick, and he is a load at 255. Go to Holly. Well, guys, it is the most physical team that they've played all season, according to Boston College. Their linebacker, Jolon Dunbar, and their defensive coordinator, Frank Spaziani, told us it will be their greatest test. He said, we just haven't faced teams that are this smash-mouth type of football. We asked Jolon Dunbar, are you ready? Can you play more physical? And he said, all systems are go. We'll oh, see. One indication, Holly, is they just subbed everybody on the front line for Boston College, trying to get fresh bodies in on that defensive line, play as many people as they can. First and 10, Michigan State at their own 40. Hoyer on that little half roll. Can run if he wants, throws instead. Curry with the catch. And Curry in the Boston College territory at the 49-yard line. Gain of 10. I think Brian Hoyer is a guy who got better as the season went along and then had the bowl preparation time to just keep building on how he finished the season. Had a great game against Penn State. Threw for a career record four touchdown passes and that big win at home to secure the bowl bid. And he is off to a good start here tonight. And any time you can run the football with some effectiveness, it opens up your play action. Plus, you've got a big-time tight end in the middle of the field. That's going to help Brian Hoyer be a better quarterback. That yardage total, fourth best in Michigan State history for a single season. Hoyer hands off on a tight end First around to Davis, who is obviously going to do a little bit of everything yeah. today. Well, and again, that just shows you the kind of athlete that Kellen Davis is. I mean, he's got excellent speed and strength at the point of attack as a blocker, but he's got the speed to run those routes down the middle and even good enough with the ball in his hands to, to hand it off to him a time or two. All career highs for him this year, 21 catches for 475 yards. And they find him on this club with an offense that really ignored the tight end yeah. as a uh, spread kind of offense under the previous administration. Flanker screen out to Devin Thomas. He had the 75 That's catches. Devin and, you know, you, it brings up a great point because you, you wonder sometimes it just is the right combination or a clean start for somebody. Take sure. Devin Thomas, for example. Here's a guy last year he had six catches. I mean, that's all he had for the entire season in a passing offense. Well, somewhere along the line, the light really came on for him. He got a fresh start with a new coaching staff. He had a phenomenal season. Uh, as a starter this year and they really didn't even know coming out of spring that he was going to be the starter it was during the summer when he really started to to prove that he was ready to play well new coaching staff comes in they have no built in loyalty to yeah. anybody on the team it's uh, open season for positions and here is the tight end again That's nice catch and a good Gallen throw Davis. Hoyer to Davis and, and Mark Herslick with a Herzlick. solid tackle takes him out of bounds so sometimes you get buried on a depth chart. You're in a coach's doghouse, not necessarily saying that's the case with Thomas. 
but he did get a fresh start. He yeah. certainly made the most of it. Yeah, and he had a great year, and I think his success really opened things up inside for Kellen Davis, particularly down the stretch. And uh, again, those are two difficult matchups. Even though BC is not a heavy man defensive team, they're mostly zone pass defense, those two guys are going to be difficult to match up with. Michigan State right now having no trouble moving the ball against Boston College. Hoyer with a lot of time down the middle, just overthrown off the fingertips of Blair White, who just touched it with his right hand. He was covered by Dewan Tribble, who's just coming back from an injury. The problem for Boston College right now is they are not getting any kind of pressure around Ryan Hoyer. Now, part of that is it's play action. Part of it is you have to respect the running game of Michigan State. But uh, so far, he is able to set his feet and survey the field and take shots where he wants to. And this is a team with 34 sacks this year. Look at the numbers early. Michigan State with 50 yards, two tight ends in this set on second and 10. And Ringer with the carry. Stutter steps inside the 35 to the 34 yard line. First guy to lead the Spartans for three straight years since Cedric Irvin did it 96 through 98 is Javon Ringer. And with 1,346 yards rushing, second team all Big Ten this year. You know, the thing is, when he played against Big Ten opponents, he was at his best. He averaged 6.6 .6 yards per carry in Big Ten competition. I mean, that's that's playing your best against the big boys. Davis back in at tight end on third and seven. He'll be in the slot. So they'll have him all over the field. Here comes pressure from Boston College. Hoyer runs away from it and throws the ball out of bounds. Good pressure that time by the blitzing linebacker, Kevin Aarons. And that's the first time they were able to get pressure, pressure on, on Hoyer and forced him to throw that ball Higgins. away. A nice that's design it pressure. It was not an all-out blitz because of the zone coverage behind it. Frank Spaziani, defensive coordinator, sent the linebacker, Kevin Akins, and he was unblocked on his way to the quarterback. And they have not sent the punt team on. It's in that iffy area at the 52-yard uh, line, or 52 yards if they wanted to go for a field goal. But on fourth and seven, they're at the 35. If you punt, how much are you going to possibly gain? You kick it out of bounds inside the 10, maybe. The ball goes in the end zone. It's back to the 20, and that only 15. Good protection for Hoyer. He throws for the tight end incomplete. They want a flag and they're not going to get it. Good coverage by Taji Morris, who had Kellen Davis. May have stopped him short of the first down, even if he makes the catch. Yeah, it was his own defense, and I think he did a nice job of timing when he came to the ball. So a good defensive stand by BC. So we're going to visit the land of our ancestors. Ireland? No. Credit card miles expired. Think more distant relatives. This is great! Hey, it's me, Cousin Bob! Going down. We gotta switch to Capital One. Get Capital One's no hassle rewards with no miles expiration, no earned caps, and no blackout dates. See, kids, first pass all the way. Something smells good. Oh, no, 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 no. The number one car information website, Edmunds.com, presented Mazda with a little problem. They named not one, but five different Mazdas to their editor's most wanted list. So how do you put all five on a pedestal? With one great event. Zoom, zoom. Announcing Mazda's most wanted sales event. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Don't miss 0.0% APR financing on the 08 Mazda 3, Mazda 6, CX-7, and CX-9. Learn about all the most wanted Mazdas at Mazda.Edmunds.com. Hurry, this year-end event ends January 2nd. Stunning video, MP3 sound, broadband speed, internet, and email, all working flawlessly together in one ultra-thin device. The new Samsung Blackjack 2, only from AT&T.
having trouble getting to work after a car accident? One call to Farmer's Help Point could fix that. Farmer's Help Point. Sanity makes a comeback. ESPN College Football, the Champ Sports Bowl, is brought to you by Champ Sports, everything for the player and the fan. Champ Sports, where sport lives. And the seven-passenger Mazda CX-9, winner of the 2008 Motor Trend Sport Utility of the Year. Some of the Pop Warner action before, that's right. Her, yes, I'm tough. Her. <laughs> Wonder who taught him how to do a game face. <laughs> Boston College takes over on downs for its own 35-yard line. Ryan hands it off. Hollander. Let's go back to the Pop Warner. Todd's got a little analysis here. Well, you know, I mean, this is the first ever sky cam replay of a Pop Warner game, but it deserves it. Watch the block as they come on their end-around sweep. Watch this. Wow. A decleater. An eight-year-old gets a decleater right there. Wow. It's outstanding. But he didn't two guys. That's a good thing. He didn't stand yeah, over him to taunt. You know, he just kind of looked at him and then ran back to the huddle. Nice block. Yes, it was. Ryan short set under pressure. Throws complete up to the 45. Maybe the 46-yard line should be a first down. Scott Jag or Jeff Jagosinski in his uh, first year was an assistant for this school, 97 and 98. Then went to the NFL Green Bay and Atlanta and came here one year after the offensive coordinator job in Green Bay, a chance to work with Brett Favre. And he's a good fit. I mean, his being at BC before really helped him to know the kind of kids yeah. you recruit at BC, what kind of players you're going to get. And uh, he fit in perfectly. Plus, he inherited an excellent senior class for his first year. Ryan in trouble. Down he goes. Good pressure by Baldwin, who has eight and a half sacks now. And they're going to mark him, I think, back at the point of what looked like a sack. Well, I think what they're arguing, I don't know that he was down, but was the ball across the line of scrimmage. You're allowed to throw it away, but if the ball doesn't cross the line of scrimmage, it's intentional grounding. And he's allowed to throw it away if he gets outside the tackle box, which he was. I think Boy, it's going to be grounding. Close. It was very, very close whether his knees were down or a knee was Additional down. Additional grounding. Offense, number 12. Spot of the foul. Loss of down, second down. The, the rule is if you're outside the tackle box, you can throw the ball away when there doesn't have to be a receiver around, but the ball must cross the line of scrimmage. Now, he didn't get enough on that football because of the, the impending tackle. Right. But still, that's the rule, and uh, Boston College backed up significantly on this second down play. That cost him 15, so it's second and 25. Not only do you use, lose the yardage, you lose the down. Left tackle move. They're going to back up five more. Gosder Sherrillis, their top lineman, has started. This is his 51st start at left tackle. He was a little early getting out of his stance. Offense, number 77. Five yard penalty, second down. That's the last guy you would expect to do it. He just set a school record for consecutive starts. You know, the problem for Boston College and their offense, and it hurt them in a couple of their losses, is they've got receivers who are good possession receivers but they don't have anybody that really threatens the defense or threatens to run by the defense so defenses can kind of squeeze down on this Boston College pass game go with the draw and only get it out to the 31 yard line Collender comes out and you'd love to see what Ryan would be able to do with you know at least one speed guy on the outside to stretch the field it's hard when you can only stretch a defense horizontally and I think that's what the problem is for Boston College they don't have as much vertical stretch unless they get it off of play action or unless they set it up and they can create ways to get somebody down the field vertically but uh, they've got good receivers they just don't have guys that can can really put the scare into a defense. And there's no doubt that Matt Ryan has the arm. Third and a mile. 
draw play. Nice safe call. Not much yardage out of the 36. And they'll have to kick it away. The tackle by Greg Jones, who is a true freshman who led this team in tackles and is going to have a sensational career in the Big Ten. Number 53, 6'1", 220 out of Cincinnati. This coaching staff was well aware of him when they were in right. Cincinnati. He wasn't going to come there. He wanted to go to the Big Ten. And when they came to Michigan State, they were able to get back in the recruiting race for him. Yeah, played at Archbishop Moeller High School. And uh, a lot of guys from the Cincinnati area on both these teams. Boston College has six kids from the Cincinnati area. A lot of familiarity. Airs to punt to Thomas. Nice move to get past the first man, then take it out of bounds. Up at the 38, an 18-yard return after a punt of 44. Michigan, first quarter in the Champ Sports Bowl with a 7-0 lead. Football fans, be part of the action with Champ Sports Bowl Bingo. If you don't have a game card already, log on to champsports.com backslash bingo and print out yours now. Then stay tuned throughout this ACC Big Ten battle for your chance to win a new 2008 Mitsubishi Eclipse GT just by following the action. Watch for plays that match the ones on your bowl bingo card and cross out the boxes as you go. Get five in any direction or fill the card and you're good to enter the random drawing for the Eclipse GT. Or submit a non-bingo card to enter a second chance drawing for other prizes. So log on, print the card, and watch the action for your chance to drive off in style. Capital One Bowl Week continues with a triple header Saturday on ESPN. First at 1, UConn and Wake Forest clash in the Meineke Car Care Bowl. Then at 4.30, it's the AutoZone Liberty Bowl with Central Florida and Mississippi State. And at 8, Penn State meets Texas A&M in the Valero Alamo Bowl. Stay focused for the next 60 seconds. That's all the time I have to tell you the truth about HD television. The truth your cable company doesn't want you to hear. Cable wants you to believe they're keeping up with HD capacity. They're not. But DirecTV is. Get the best entertainment and the most HD channels with DirecTV. That includes exclusive sports with games and matchups you won't see on cable. So call now for all your favorite sports, movies, and shows. And you always get your local channels. Do you know what else? Packages start at only $29.99 per month. Plus, call now and ask how you can get 32 premium movie channels free for three months. There are no startup costs, no equipment to buy, and professional installation is free. Call now. You also get a free HD receiver or DirecTV DVR upgrade from America's number one HD provider. Time's up. Make the call. Capital One Bowl Week. The time of year when day after day, night after night, those that have earned their way come to celebrate the rewards of a season well played. For the rest of us, watch and enjoy an American holiday tradition. Capital One Bowl Week featuring over 20 bowl games in 12 days on the ESPN family of networks continues next. Maryland against Oregon State in the Emerald Bowl, part of Capital Bowl Week on ESPN. That's next, and the Terps did quite a job turning their season around. One of those teams that beat Boston College earlier in the year. Culcrick, nice change of direction, and the big guy rambling inside the 45-yard line. 17 yards. That's well, been an interesting bowl season so far. I was very impressed with the two quarterbacks in the Motor City Bowl. Curtis Painter of Purdue, 546 yards. Dan Lefevre of Central Michigan, that team played extremely well. They got blown out by Purdue earlier in the year. Howard Schnellenberger still undefeated in his bowl games. Takes Florida Atlantic to a win, and I'm not sure anybody played better down the stretch of the season this year than Jamal Charles at Texas. Yeah. I mean, he finished out his year in a big way. Ringer this time. The Michigan State's offensive line so far appears to have had its way yeah. with that Boston College defensive front. 
Boston College's defensive line is not overly big, but they, uh, they're they active, they're smart, they play sound defense, and they free up their linebackers. But this Michigan State offensive line, uh, you're right, they look good so far. And again, you can't emphasize enough what a switch this offense made. This was a spread offense under John L. Smith. And then all of a sudden, with those players, Mark D'Antonio and his staff, and the offensive coordinator, Don Treadwell, said, you know what, we're going to be a power team. We're going to run some gap plays. And they've taken to it very well. Call Crick. And quite honestly, most guys fit one system or the other. Yeah. Very rarely are you going to find, especially a whole group of people, yeah. who can switch from one to another and be successful. Well, and the biggest thing I think it changes is it, it changes first with a mental attitude because this offense now is put your hand on the ground and fire off the football and hit people. Get into people quickly. You know, the spread offense running game is more two-point stance, more zone blocking, more reaching people. It's more of a finesse running. And so it's a, it's a much different mentality and I think they've convinced this offensive line that that's the best way for them to win. And it's paid off. Their first bowl appearance after a three-year drought. And they've rushed for over 200 yards a game doing it. Ringer, good cut to the outside. Ringer still on his feet, 25-20, and pushed out of bounds. Now these well, two moved the tight end that time. It was very successful. These two guys are a nice one-two punch. You see Kellen Davis right at the point of attack. Number eight, he gets the great block to secure the run. Larkin is the guy he blocked, but Ringer and Colcraig, they're two different styles, but that doesn't change the way they call plays. They just call the plays they want with no matter who's in there, but Ringer has a little bit more make you miss. Colcraig a little more power at 255 pounds. Ringer fourth in the Big Ten in rushing this year. Colcraig was number nine in the Big Ten. What a one-two punch. Kalkrick back in there this time. It's a very patient runner. Waits on the hole to develop. Let's go down to Holly Rowe. Well, guys, Javon Ringer is a 1,000-yard rusher this season for the first time since 2001 for Michigan State. And he said this summer he was actually working out, doing some summer conditioning, running the stadium stairs with T.J. Duckett great NFL player and TJ took him aside and said you know what you can get a thousand you just got to try you got to believe that you can and he said you know that guy at that caliber having that kind of confidence in me really stuck with me and he thought you know if TJ thinks I can do it maybe I can and guys he sure did just took somebody to believe in him and give him a little self-confidence well Holly the hard part for him is exchanging possessions with Culkrick, I mean, you only get to play about half the time. It's even that much tougher, and he did it anyway. In fact, before this game, 1,346 yards. Yep. You mentioned T.J. Duckett. He was that last guy in 2001 to run for 1,000 yards for Michigan State. Ron Ringer, uh, they're a nice combination because they've got different styles. And, uh, you know, in the last game to secure the bowl bit against Penn State, Culkrick was the big guy. 99 yards in that ball game. His last game in Michigan State Stadium. And he's been the beneficiary this year of Ringer getting a lot of good runs inside the 10-yard line, being a little tired. Culkrick comes in and gets the touchdowns, as you saw at 21 this year, which is a school record. Down the middle, picked by Silva in the end zone. The All-American safety back to the 30 and out of bounds at the 38-yard line. And he had a beat on that one the whole way. 39-yard return, the seventh interception for Jamie Silva. Yeah, and Brian Hoyer did not pick up Jamie Silva in his vision. He was looking at Devin Thomas the entire way. Devin Thomas, they put him in motion to try to free him up against the defense. Watch Jamie Silva just read the quarterback. It's a zone defense. He drops back. His eyes are on the quarterback. And as soon as that ball is thrown, he breaks in front of Devin Thomas. That's his seventh interception of the season. And this guy is a football player. I mean, he may be not the biggest or the fastest, but that's why he was a Thorpe finalist. Well, you may not have to find where every safety is, but you better find out where Jamie Silva is. And here's a kid who has become a consensus All-American after barely getting a scholarship. He was the last guy to get one, and it was like they were, yeah. they were describing how to get they out of the meeting, right? Yeah, they were leaving the meeting. So wait a minute, we got a scholarship. Yeah, oh, give it to Silva. Yeah. He was but, going to Brown, I think. Yes, he was. Yeah. Very bright young man, as are most of the Boston College players. 
of the top 25 teams this year, they have a 93% graduation rate, which is number one in the NCAA. For more on Silva, here's Holly Rowe. Well, guys, Jamie Silva was one of those last guys to get a scholarship, and Frank Spaziani told us the first time he got out on the field and we were in a scrimmage situation, that kid was like a deer in the headlights. He didn't know where to be, where to line up, or what to do, and somehow he could tackle the ball, find the ball, and make plays. He said from the very beginning, I knew we could teach him because he just had those instincts that you can't teach. He was just a football player, and that's a great compliment coming from Spaziani. Well, anybody with hair like that ought to have a scholarship anyway. <laughs> Third and five for Boston College. Ryan with a quick throw over the middle, incomplete, intended for yeah. Rich Cannell. Well, the, the umpire got in the way. The, the umpire got in the way of that throw to Matt Ryan. Ryan was trying to hit Gunnell right in the middle. Watch the umpire kind of just disrupt the throw and the vision of Gunnell, and he slowed down, and it's fourth down now for Boston College. I mean, you can't blame him. That's his position to be. He tried to duck out of the way, but it affected the timing of that throw by Matt Ryan. The umpire, John Mascarello, almost had an egg-sized lump on his forehead. <laughs> Airs to punt again. He's had a good game so far. Thomas is back. Terry Love is the normal punt returner, but he's one of those guys who was suspended for academics. So Thomas, who is the great kickoff return man, is also back on punts today. Fair catch makes Fair it at the 11-yard line. A 46-yard kick and no return. Good job again by Johnny Ayers. Despite rumors circulating online, Winter X Games 12 will take place January 24th through the 27th. Please go to winterxrumoralert.com for more information. My hometown has big buildings and beautiful lakes. People from around the world come to visit. We build cool new airplanes and rockets to outer space. People here keep our country safe. They make monsters that battle each other. They cure people of all kinds of bad stuff. In a magic land full of beautiful princesses. This isn't the work of a child's imagination. This is Orlando, Florida. And while fantasy worlds may have put us on the map, the high-tech business of the real world also comes to life here. We're home to UCF, the nation's seventh largest university, and its new medical college, a top research park, Florida Hospital, one of the nation's largest healthcare systems, and more. So these kids can imagine futures as doctors, scientists, and ballerinas without ever having to leave their hometown. Orlando, Florida, putting imagination to work. Just when everyone here at Mazda thought we were all ready for our big, most wanted sales event, Motor Trend had something to add. Naming the seven-passenger Mazda CX-9 the 2008 Sport Utility of the Year. There, now we're ready. Announcing Mazda's most wanted sales event. Right now, get 0.0% APR financing on the 2008 Mazda CX-9. Hurry, get to Mazda's most wanted sales event. You won't want to miss it. headsets. Find all the stuff you need for all the stuff you got at your neighborhood Radio Shack. Do stuff. Some of the Spartans who made the long trip down enjoying it so far here in Orlando up 7-0 over Boston College. Peace. Late in the first quarter. BC wasn't able to take advantage of that interception by Silva but they were able to flip field position a little bit. Hoping their defense can get a three and out here and give the offense the ball. Boyer fumbles the snap from center, and B.C. had a shot at it. They say they have it, but no official sign yet. Mark Herzlick, the linebacker, number 94, looked like he had the best opportunity to come up with it. And they have it. Herzlick did get it. John Masters is the center, number 54, and this ball never was cleanly exchanged. 
Partly the pressure that Ron Brace, I think, put on the center, but the ball never got up cleanly, and Herzlick is the guy that's going to come away with the football. So they get the, the punt and the good field position on defense, and then they get the turnover right away. So for the first time, Matt Ryan in Michigan State territory with the Boston College offense. They have done nothing to this point. Three drives, only 27 yards, and one first down, but a golden opportunity right here. Got Collender as the deep man in the eye. Throws over the middle that time to Whitworth, and Whitworth taken down by Thornhill. Here's Holly. Guys, the Boston College offensive line has been over here just getting ripped by their offensive line coach for not doing a good job. And Matt Ryan, sensing that, came over, could see the guys were down, and went along and talked to his wide receivers and his offensive line and said, hey, we're going to get something going right here. Your protection has been great. It's been my bad. My bad, guys. You're doing a great job. We're going to get it going. Said by a quarterback who doesn't yeah. want to get knocked down anymore, right. right? Keep them happy. Keep them encouraged. Don't let them get their heads down. Michigan State shows blitz. Here they come. Ryan over the middle. Complete down to the one-yard line. Goodell. And that's very close to a first down, maybe just a foot short. Brandon Long well, this was is where, involved. This is where you see what Matt Ryan does. He sees this blitzing linebacker, so he knows he's got to get rid of the football. He also knows where he's going to go with the football. He gets it out of his hands. Gannell catches it right in the middle of the field, almost gets it into the end zone. That's why Matt Ryan has only been sacked 19 times this year for as much as they throw it. He gets rid of the football. To the goal line. McCluskey, the ball carrier. McCluskey, the fullback, with a rare carry, only his eighth of the season. Well, they only needed one to get a first down. We put him first and goal on the one, and that's, uh, it appears that it looks like they're going to bring it in and measure it. And if the chains are right on the sideline, they were at the one-yard line, and he's inside that. Well, that, that the good news for Boston College, when we talked to Steve Logan, you talk about how difficult it is to throw the football when you're inside the 10-yard line. Well, they had a first down outside of the 10, and so they were able to get another first down, which they did right here. So that's a, a much better situation than having a first and goal from the 10 or, or less. Steve Logan right there, the play caller, was the former head coach in East Carolina. Jeff Jagodzinski was his offensive line coach there. Steve Logan spent the last three years coaching in NFL Europe. Wasn't going to get back into college coaching, but it was the right fit with Jeff Jagodzinski. First and goal. Ryan with a play fake, throws wide open. Touchdown as he hits his tight end, John Lloyd. Ryan was able to buy yeah. some time and avoid the sack so he could get the touchdown. That's exactly the, the perfect way to describe it. He's not the most agile or mobile guy, but he knows how to buy himself some extra time. He just kept drifting away from the pressure, waiting for his receiver to uncover, and then getting his feet set up just enough to make that throw for the touchdown. Apinavishis will come on to try the point after. He's hit 43 out of 47 this year. The former walk-on drills this one through. And Boston College takes advantage of the turnover and gets on the board to tie this at 7-7. My art history student, Emily, has taken advantage of opportunities to study in Spain, Egypt, and England. She's already won a prestigious fellowship for graduate study, and this year, she's curating an exhibit at Boston's Museum of Fine Arts. Nick is a star on the field and off. With a demanding double major in education and spending summers as a research assistant, he still makes time to bring a smile to children in Boston schools and hospitals. I'm Emily Newmeyer. I'm Nick Larkin, and we're students at Boston College. Every idea, every action has its place. Now and for the future. Ideas to meet the needs of local citizens and those in distant lands. Actions to advance learning, job creation, and economic growth. 
increasing the impact of knowledge and cultural understanding for the next generation. Michigan State University, from land grant to world grant for the 21st century. Well, Boston College has done virtually nothing on offense, and yet here they are after taking advantage of a turnover, and they have tied this game against Michigan State 7-7. Devin Thomas on the return. Sneaky fast gets to the outside and across the 30. One guy I want you to keep an eye on here is I want you to watch the right guard Cliff Ramsey. He's going to pull out and get a nice block on Greg Jones. Just enough of a block on the outside to give Matt Ryan a little bit more time. Watch the guard come out makes contact drives a linebacker down that opens up the lane the throwing lane for Matt Ryan and they get the touchdown. They get the turnover. And they get the touchdown, and it's a, a new ball game again. And if he doesn't get out there, Matt Ryan yeah. doesn't have a chance to throw that no, ball at all. Greg Jones is very quick, and he was he was in the right position coming up the field. Ringer on the toss. Planted by his own man at the 34-yard line. His guard, Roland Martin, ended up on top of him. And they will let the clock run down. We'll be facing a second and six for Michigan State when we come back to the Champs Sports Bowl. We have played one full quarter in Orlando, and it's 7-7. Seven, seven. ESPN360.com, your online home for Capital One Bowl Week. Athletic retailer of the Arena Football League, Champ Sports, where sport lives. The new Philips Norelco Architect, a shaver with flexible heads which pivot and rotate freely to give you a great shave even on the neck. Simplicity is making hard to reach places easy to reach. Welcome to the new shape of fast. Introducing the new Pontiac G6 GXP Street Edition. Pontiac, designed for action. Hurry up, kids! Nowhere with expired credit card miles? Whew. Get Capital One's no hassle rewards with no miles expiration, no earn caps, and no blackout dates. They should switch to Capital One. What's in your wallet? Taste naturally nutritious. Planters instinctively good. The new Philips Norelco Architect. A shaver with flexible heads which pivot and rotate freely to give you a great shave even on the neck. Simplicity is making hard to reach places easy to reach. Welcome back to Orlando and the Champ Sports Bowl game. Glad you could join us. Perfect night here in Central Florida. And we have a 7 7 score at the end of the first quarter. Michigan straight really, uh, Michigan State rather, really controlled this game until they had two takeaways on their last three snaps. They were going in for a score apparently. 
pass interception in the end zone. Then they turned the ball over and gave Boston College great field position for their first score. Toss out to Thomas. Here's today's AFLAC trivia question. Boston College tied for the longest bowl winning streak in the nation. Who was the head coach of the last team to beat BC in a bowl game? Now that's harder. Mm -hmm. Very hard, in fact. All you have to do is uh, text us with your answer. That's what's really hard. <laughs> it would be for me. <laughs> and that will be a first down for Michigan State. They have moved the ball very, very well. Hoyer has made only that one mistake. Well, too, I mean, he threw the interception to Silva, and then they had the bobbled snap. You don't know if it was the quarterback or the center, but that was really the, the costly one. They overcame the interception. But the fumbled snap deep in their own territory led directly to Boston College's tying touchdown. But you're right. They have moved the football both on the ground and through the air. Ringer the tailback on first and ten and he'll get the carry. Not much up the middle. Maybe a yard before he shoved back. Joe Lon Dunbar was a pleasure meeting that young man. A very bright very well spoken senior who runs this defense third and tackles this year and the only reason he wasn't first uh, one Jamie Silva who was a brilliant player from the safety spot but Dunbar was hurt yeah, hurt his ankle in the Florida State game and missed some time but really had an outstanding final season became like a coach on the field and took his game to a whole new level for Frank Spaziani's defense. Play fake to call Crick. They screen back to the other side. And incomplete as they had the fullback Andrew Hawkin out there, but he went down. And the ball sailed over his head. Setting up the screen. Looked like they had something there, too, if Hawkin can stay on his feet. I think so far, a really nice job by Don Treadwell, the offensive coordinator, mixing play calling. Keeping this Boston College defense a little bit off balance. That may have been one of those plays where, you know, you're working on bowl games and trying to put in something new because he only caught 10 passes all year long. Third and long, they go to the shotgun. Hoyer under pressure, throws. He's got his tight end, Davis. But Davis will be well shy of any first down as Dunbar is right there. Yeah. Dunbar making the stop. Looks like the BC defense has made some pretty decent adjustments. Yeah, they're, they're settling in a little bit more. They've been a little bit more stout against the run. And closing around that tight end a little bit more. Early in the game, guys were running a little bit more free in the passing game. Now, Ryan Hoyer having to fit the ball in a little tighter spaces. Bates will punt to Silva, who had just nearly seven yards of return. Low kick. Boy, it was very returnable. Makes the first man miss. Silva tripped up as he got to the 30 yard line. A 14 yard return after a 37 yard punt. We told you about Matt Ryan earlier that he was the ACC player of the year. He also won the Johnny Unitas Award. The Golden Arm Award is the best senior quarterback in the country in single season school record. 4,200 plus yards and 28 touchdown passes with only 18 interceptions. And again, you, you consider that he did that with a new head coach and a new offensive coordinator. Now, granted, both guys are from passing backgrounds and, and, and a quarterback friendly systems and coaches, but he still had to relearn a whole new system starting last spring. Ryan looked toward Purvis, then goes back the other way, and it's incomplete. Good defense by Michigan State as Megua couldn't come down with it Warwick and Gordon on defense 
Hawks go to Holly. Well, guys, Matt Ryan is projected to be a very high draft pick, if not the first quarterback taken in this year's NFL draft. And he said it caused him some real stress the last few weeks trying to get that organized. He said he's going to go to Arizona after the bowl game and begin his training and his preparation for the draft. He said he's had a lot of details to get taken care of, but he said he took about a week, got that taken care of, did the award circuit. And he said for the last two and a half weeks, all I've thought about and worried about is Michigan State. He's really trying to compartmentalize and get things back on the field. Ryan quick set flanker screen to Robinson got a block in front of him good job by his teammates to get him that extra yardage and he's up near the 39 yard line and Todd really the NFL is in dire need of pro style quarterbacks right now yeah. there just aren't guys being developed yeah and he is a good one I'll tell you this guy has got everything that you want out of the NFL quarterback position his problem though right now in this game and it has been for different parts of the season is they just don't have enough of a running game consistently they average just over 100 yards or that dynamic speed receiver right. on the outside to keep a defense on it which really makes his numbers even that much more impressive Ryan again throws to the sideline complete hit the tight end McCluskey but you see in that play the, the things that make him good. I mean, he makes the play fake. Watch how quickly the ball's out of his hand. Boom, set his feet, it's gone. Perfect throw right over the shoulder. It's not a hard catch for the fullback to make, and it's an easy first down conversion. But the BC offense is really limited, I think, to more horizontal stretch stuff than, and not as much vertical stretch. Still have to try to keep that defense honest and try to throw the football down the field if they get a shot. LV Whitworth. The running back wrapped up by Thornhill. Ryan's dad, Michael, also the name of his older brother, who was also a quarterback. Yeah. What an interesting look, the green half. I, I, I'm just curious why he chose the green. Boston College's colors, maroon and gold. Maybe the, the Irish, maybe the Boston, maybe the... Maybe so he, his son can find his dad if he looks into the stands in the middle of the BC section, a green hat. Maybe we can find him. TV camera. That's Who right. Knows? Second and 11. Ryan on the half roll. He'll keep it across midfield. Goes down at the 41. Now he slid and was hit anyway. Yeah. Yeah. The 40 yard Let's line. go to. I'm sorry. Boston College and Michigan State tied at seven. We're the Citrus Bowl Stadium for the Champs Sports Bowl. Right, you can join us. And Boston College trying to win its eighth straight bowl game. Well, that was the one play so far where they tried to get the ball down the field. They were looking play action to throw the ball to Gunnell, crossing back the other way. But Matt Ryan saw a lot of green grass in front of him and showed a little bit of running ability to get another first down. Well, let's not get carried away. He ran it okay. Whitworth swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. Good play by Davis Clark, who came up from the corner spot. Now, you don't have to run the ball a lot as a quarterback I mean in, in a system like this but you've got to be able to run it enough to elude pressure and be quick enough in the pocket to buy time and also if a defense just commits themselves to covering everybody and, and only rushing four and they leave you lanes you got to be able to tuck it and get what you can get pick up a couple first downs that way and he's he's good enough to do that second and ten here comes the blitz incomplete he had Whitworth out there, got it to him in a flat, but Whitworth couldn't hold on. And a good defensive job by Tabachnik, the linebacker, number 42, was out there in coverage. The reason Matt Ryan has to throw so many throws like this off his back foot is because they know if you bring more than five guys, you'll get a free rusher against Boston College because the Boston College offense is is based around getting five guys out in every pattern, releasing their backs. They don't keep backs in to help block very often. That was a catch Whitworth had to make. Usually they're throwing the ball out of the backfield to Collender and not Whitworth. He has five times as many catches. Three-man rush this time. Ryan over the middle, and this one is caught for a first down with a perfect strike to Jarvis. 
He's horse collared, but held on as Warwick was right there. Nice throw by Ryan. A nice throw and a nice pocket provided. This time they keep Whitworth in momentarily before releasing. And Ryan able to stand right in that pocket with his 6 6 frame and see the middle of the field and deliver the strike to Jarvis. Boy, that's a nice throw. Have it at the 28. Collender, no chance. To Batsnick again, who's alternating in there with the freshman All American Greg Jones at that strong side linebacker spot. Michigan State's doing a nice job against the Boston College run. They haven't given up any significant plays, and they've done most of it by keeping two safeties back. They haven't had to bring an extra guy down near the line of scrimmage. And uh, when you can defend the run, Without having to commit an extra guy, it really gives you the advantage defensively. There they are again, two safeties. Ryan with plenty of time to throw. End zone. Touchdown. Gamel made the catch, and that was because Ryan had all come free. Gunnell with his sixth touchdown catch of the year. And it wasn't the route. It was an adjustment to the route by Gunnell. After he saw the quarterback buying a little time and waiting, Gunnell just changed that route and brought it back to the end zone, and Ryan found it. Seventy yard drive camped off by the scoring strike. And Ryan now with 30 touchdown passes this year. BC on top by a touchdown. Every year about this time, something magical happens. The red tags come out for the Buick Pontiac GMC Red Tag Event. Look for the red tag and your chance to get the best price of the season on 2008 Buick Pontiac and GMC models. And the price on that tag is the price you pay. With $1,000 red tag event bonus cash, get this low mileage lease on a 2008 Pontiac G6 for around $199 per month. Call for details. Hurry. The red tag event ends January 2nd. See your Buick Pontiac GMC dealer today. Christmas. No reason this can't be fun, you know. Time Magazine calls Charlie Wilson's War the year's funniest smart movie. That's Charlie. The filmmakers and stars are on top of their game. Delicious comic teamwork raves Newsweek. <laughs> you ain't James Bond. You ain't Thomas Jefferson. Nominated for five Golden Globes, including Best Picture. Can we get you a drink? Oh, I love any kind of whiskey. We don't have alcohol in the presidential residence. Bet a lot of people make that mistake. <laughs> no. Charlie Wilson's War. Rated up. Now playing. Boston College has taken the lead 14 to 7. Gunnell with a touchdown catch from Matt Ryan, capping a 70 yard drive that went three minutes and 31 seconds and took 10 plays. Yeah. And Matt Ryan spread the football around. Steve Logan, the offensive coordinator, said, You know what? If you run your route, the ball might find you. In this offense, he doesn't keep track of, of catches by individuals, but rather catches by positions. Who's open? Let's get it to all the positions on the field. Thomas has to run up on this one, takes it at the 13. 
Guy's a tough runner. He'll drag people with him. Goes up to about the 33-yard line. We'll go back to the touchdown. I want you to watch Rich Gannell, who catches the touchdown pass. Now, he's going to be in motion right here. He's going to come across the formation and run a corner route. But as soon as he looks back and sees his quarterback in a little bit of trouble and starting to scramble, Gannell is just going to instinctively roll it back inside to the end zone. He sees the quarterback. He changes the route. Matt Ryan sees him and throws a perfect throw for the touchdown. That's good communication non-verbal communication between a wide receiver and a quarterback and pretty decent coverage to be yeah. as well took a great throw so now Michigan State which had dominated the early part of the game trying to get something started again ringer shaking tackles as he goes finally stopped by Dimitri Scafe number 55 who was Chasing the play from behind. I think Michigan State's got to stay with what they do, and that is run the football first and foremost, and then get some play action. Find a way to, to get the ball, maybe take a shot down the field for Devin Thomas, and keep working their tight end, Kellen Davis, in the middle. Boyer gives it off to Ringer on the delay, and Ringer is slammed to the ground at the 39-yard line. That was a nice play by Roderick Rollins. Uh, cornerback number 20 held his ground on the outside and just forced that ball back inside. Well, there's what you're talking about from Michigan State. Balanced with 16 rushing plays and 13 pass plays of their first 29. They've done that all year. They're one of only nine teams yeah. in all of college football and they average over 200 yards both passing and running for the season. And the most important step, they're averaging 34 points a game. Foyer down the middle, that is too high. Yeah. Silva gives Thomas a bump yeah. after the ball goes by. Incomplete. Thomas with 75 catches Silva this year, 1,226 yards. And he had Brings Thomas. He had him on the corner route. The ball just took off a little bit on Hoyer and sailed over the top. But they had the corner route. If he gets that ball down, Thomas makes that catch in front of Silva. And for Michigan State, the great team, Aaron Bates. Back Bates will receive. kick to Silva. Jamie Silva. Safety waits at his own 20-yard line. Again, a returnable kick. Silva says get away from it now takes it on the first bounce and brought down in his tracks four yard return after a 45 yard punt good job by Ryan Allison down on special teams back in a moment. Athletic retailer of the Arena Football League. Champ Sports, where sport lives. <sighs> Hope I don't miss work this Christmas. Yeah, how will you pay for things like food, electricity, food, dental bills? Good zooks! You need a backup plan. Oh, oh, oh. That's why we have Aflac. So I'll have cash to help pay bills. Ah. Right, but what if you're still not better by Christmas? Hmm. Aflac! Black. Ask about it at work. Rudolph's better. But what? now Blitz is sick. Wow! Alabama will receive, actually, after Southern missed won the opening toss. It happens in every game. One moment, one play, changes everything. Fourth and 12. Boy, lays it up. Coco with the catch. That's a Pontiac game-changing performance. Vote for the Pontiac game-changing performance of the year at Pontiac.com slash NCAA and help an NCAA school earn $100,000 in scholarship contributions from Pontiac. Stunning video, MP3 sound, broadband speed internet and email. 
all working flawlessly together in one ultra-thin device. The new Samsung Blackjack 2, only from AT&T. ESPN College Football, the Champ Sports Bowl, is brought to you by Champ Sports, everything for the player and the fan. Champ Sports, where sport lives. Aflac, ask about it at work. And Pontiac, vote now for the Pontiac game-changing performance of the year at ESPN.com. Keyword Pontiac. You can live your Disney vacation dreams during the Year of a Million Dreams celebration at Walt Disney World Resort right here in Florida as it continues through 2008. Experience all the new magic happening at a place where dreams come true. And they have that suite in Cinderella's Castle that was built for Walt Disney that you can win the right to stay in. That is so cool. Ryan throwing to his left, throwing wow. back over the middle, complete, and then drop. Wow, what a throw, though. I mean, this, is, this is such an uncommon throw. It's a right-handed quarterback on a bootleg left, throwing back across his body to the right and throwing it on the spot. I mean, watch this. This is not easy to do. Roll left. Now, it's a little easy if you're thrown to the left sideline, but he's throwing it back to the middle and guns it. For, I mean, that, that was a beautiful throw. That was Elway-esque. Yeah. He's the only other person I could ever remember seeing do that and have something on it. And Megwa just dropped it as Weaver was there trying to rip it away from him at the very end. I mean, give Weaver credit for not giving up and, and scrapping at the end of the play and ripping it out, but that was a phenomenal throw. Blitz coming. It's one of the reasons you don't blitz him. He gets rid of the ball so quick. Gunnell made that catch. Let's go to Holly. Well, he shows some of that toughness that his childhood hero, Brett Favre, has as a quarterback. And, guys, Jeff Jagosinski, his new head coach, was the offensive coordinator at Green Bay last season. So he hooked it up that Brett Favre called Matt Ryan. Matt said, I got this message in this slow southern drawl. This guy's like, hey, Matt, this is Brett. And he said, Brett who and then he starts talking and he realizes it's Brett Favre and he said I was running around my girlfriend's apartment like oh my gosh oh my gosh it's Brett Favre on my phone on my phone he said they've been trading phone messages but how cool is that oh that's great you can only imagine what a thrill that must be Ryan again again throwing back to his left that time too high as he tried to fit it in you can help decide the Pontiac game-changing performance of the year. You can vote at ESPN.com, search Pontiac to determine which school will win the $100,000 General Scholarship Fund contribution courtesy of Pontiac. Here are your options. Appalachian State in the first game of the year, the blocked field goal that won it. Auburn, the game-winning field goal against Florida, the Alabama touchdown to beat Arkansas, and Trinity with that multiple laterals for the game-winning touchdown against Millsaps. We saw two of those four. Yes, we did. We saw a couple other ones that weren't on that list that were pretty incredible. Ryan throws underneath up to the 38-yard line. Challenger made that catch. Right now what Boston College is doing, their whole passing game is based on matchups because they know they don't have the, the speed guys outside. They're going to spread you out, and they're going to try to find the best matchups. Now, for most of the year, it's been Andre Callender, their tailback against linebackers. These last couple possessions, or last couple throws here, it's been wide receivers in the slot working against linebackers. A couple plays ago, it was Gunnell. That time, it was Challenger. And Boston College has taken its first time out on a third and four. And BC, number 14 in the country, up on Michigan State, 14-7. Hurry up, kids! Going nowhere with expired credit card miles? Whew. Get Capital One's No Hassle Rewards with no miles expiration, no earn caps, and no blackout dates. They should switch to Capital One. What's in your wallet? Rose Bowl game.
game presented by City, Illinois versus USC, New Year's Day at 4.30 Eastern on ABC. Falling in love during a semester abroad, priority number seven. Excuse me, there must be something wrong with my eyes because I can't take them off of you. Being able to afford a semester abroad, priority number one. If you were a laser, you'd be set on stunning. Get the money you need with a Monticello student loan. Use it for education-related expenses, and you can pay it back after you graduate. It's a great way to supplement savings, scholarships, and federal loans. Apply with a cosigner, and you could get a better rate. Excuse me. Monticello Student Loans, when education is priority number one. Call 888-856-0690 or log on to 81MonticelloLoans.com. Welcome back to Orlando. The answer to tonight's Affleck. trivia question. Boston College tied for the longest bowl winning streak in the nation. Who was the head coach of the last team to beat them in a bowl game? Gary Barnett at Colorado in the 1999 Ins uh, Insight Bowl. 32% of the fans got it right. I'll bet 99% of the 32% cheated <laughs> to get it right. No offense. As long as they use the ESPN College Football Almanac, yes. it's okay. Yes, that's officially licensed cheating. Tabachnik knocked that one away. It's a good stop for the Michigan State defense. Uh, Pat Narduzzi, defensive coordinator, came with Mark D'Antonio from Cincinnati. Their defense needing a stop right there and slow down Matt Ryan, who uh, after a slow start had, had started to really pick it up. Thomas will drop back to his own 20 for Ayers punt. Not a great kick taken at the 27 yard line punt 35 yards no return. Capital One Bowl Week featuring over 20 bowl games in 12 days on the ESPN family of networks continues tomorrow night. Joe Poff and Penn State face the Texas A&M Aggies in the Valero Alamo Bowl. Part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN tomorrow night at 8 Eastern. Joe Paterno coaching in his 500th bowl game. And I think go, also coach. his record 34th bowl game as well. Remarkable. Gary Darnell, the acting head coach. Uh, I think both these teams, it's, it's a matter of who gets, fights through the distractions the best because they both have had their share this year. Boyer throws to the sideline. It's a little contact right at the uh, point of the throw, and it's incomplete. Devin Thomas was the intended receiver in Tribble, who was uh, really a bonus for him coming back to play in this ball game. Very good corner. Yeah. Had a knee injury, missed the last two games of the regular season, the ACC championship game, and he was really one of their key leaders on this defense. Another one of those seniors, guy out of Cincinnati, Ohio, played at North College Hill High School. And he's the guy that plays the field corner, the wide side of the field. To the toss to Colcrick and the 255 pounder turned the corner and got it out near the 32 yard line McLaughlin on the tackle just back to that Valero Alamo Bowl real quick you know Penn State had a chance they were hoping for a New Year's Day Bowl and a, and a potential 10 win season they went into East Lansing the last game of the year that was a huge win for Michigan State because at six and six good chance Michigan State doesn't get a bowl bid exactly. they won that game they were down 17 points in that football game and came back for Mark D'Antonio and won and secured their spot here in Orlando. And Kellen Davis had a huge game in that one over 100 yards. Incomplete pass to Blair White the second time they have thrown to that young man. Caught only three passes during the regular season. This game has started to change a little bit from a momentum standpoint. The 
First quarter seemed like the Michigan State offense and defense had the upper hand. Now the second quarter, the Boston College defense has settled in a little bit better. Matt Ryan has found his groove a little bit better. Ryan Hoyer started out four of five and a touchdown and three of 11 for 12 yards since. Silva trying to hand out a little to hit punishment. Somebody. Yes, he does. Yeah, he just wants to hit somebody every every play he can. <laughs> this used to be called the uh, Car Quest Bowl back in '94, and Glenn Foley had a huge day, setting a then bowl record, 391 passing yards and three touchdowns, earned the MVP of this game in Boston College. Easily defeated the Virginia Cavaliers 31 to 13. A side note of interest to ESPN and ABC employees: our producer Bo Garrett met his bride Tara at this game. Something that they will, or at least Bo will always remember yeah. fondly. It says something about our business, though, that they would meet at a ball game, doesn't it? We never did really hear the story of how, though, whether she, you know, was she selling Cokes in the stadium or what? I mean, we didn't really hear just how that happened. But. Could have involved a restraining order. <laughs> BC with a clock running, 5.05 to go in the first half at the 32 yard line. Ryan throws underneath, couldn't get it to his tight end Purvis, and Michigan State playing some solid pass defense yeah. from its linebackers to Batchnik. Got a hand on that one. See, the, the key for Michigan State is right now, as long as they can continue to play two guys here, that means they don't respect the Boston College running game enough to commit an extra guy. That allows them to play more combination pass coverages. That time to Batchnik, excellent position on the tight end, but as long as they can keep two safeties back there and feel confident that they can defend the run, then they can do a little bit more creative things in their pass coverage. Since Ryan threw that touchdown pass, he's only hit three of his last seven for 18 yards. Here comes the blitz. Trying to run away from it, and he can't. Taken down back at the 17-yard line, and there is Tabachnik again, who's getting an awful lot of time at both the outside linebacker spots. That sack for a loss of 14, and his first sack of the entire season. Well, there's Tabachnik, number 42, working against the freshman. Now, you can't fault the freshman tackle because Matt Ryan left the pocket, and the, the tackle, Anthony Costanzo, had no idea where the quarterback was going. And so that puts a lot of pressure on him. But Tabachnik with a couple plays in a row for the Michigan State defense. You're right. All that tackle's trying to do is protect the outside and help form the pocket for his quarterback. Airs to kick. And Thomas expecting it to get good field position. Waits at his 40. Oh, my gosh. Well, that was ugly. This is going to be marked that was near less the than 10 30 yards. yard line. Make it six official. That'll kill the old well, average. You know, when you play in a bowl game, there are a couple things you really are worried about. Number one is tackling in space because you haven't done it very much. Number two is, is turnovers. And number three is your kicking game. Well, the Boston College kicking game, they gave up the big kickoff return to start the game. That's a mistake right there in the kicking game. Well, we said good field position. This is great field position. Remember in the ACC championship game, it was a blocked field going a blocked extra point that was returned for two points. There were huge plays for Virginia Tech in that game as well. Colcrick starts this series as the tailback. Hoyer throws out in the flat for Thomas, and it's way too low. Trying to get it out there in a yeah. hurry. Well, that was dangerous, too. That, that was close to being a lateral. Tried to get it to him quickly, trying to get Devin Thomas his hands on the football. Hoyer has cooled off considerably, throwing the football, trying to get a, a quick throw to get the ball in the hands of Devin Thomas and let him make a play.
Thomas with only two catches so far and only five yards to show for it. He's isolated on the near side this time. Culprit on second and ten on the draw. Bowling his way to the 22 yard line. They need to reach the 20 for a first down. Dunbar made the tackle. Here's Holly. Well, it's been a well told story, but for those of you who don't know, J.U. Culcrick, just an amazing story. He's an eight year old boy was in war torn Liberia grew up there his father was a presidential aide and when revolution hit that country he had to run for his life the kids would often have to run and escape people who were trying to find their family his mom was finally able to bring him here to the United States when he was eight years old but he said you know that desperate feeling of running for your life has really helped me as a running back when you have to find an opening and there's not one there you have to or the bad guys get you. <laughs> Well, these are just football players. I mean, he was facing some yeah. real bad guys. I tell you, he's a pleasant young man, too, though. I mean, he's always smiling. He's a very uh, articulate young guy. And we were at the Michigan State practice earlier this week, and Mark D'Antonio started about the second week of the year playing music, very loud music, through the entire practice. Has a DJ over in the corner playing the music, and J.U. Colcrick danced just about whenever he wasn't on the field running the ball or in a play he was dancing either out there or on the sideline very uh, engaging young man about a yard and a half shy of a first down so they will go for the field goal with Brett Swenson who's only hit 13 out of 20 this year he'll try this one from 38 yards <laughs> And Swenson from 38 yards knocks it through to cut the deficit to four points. Time now for Todd's Taste of the Town. It's the lost footage from Morgantown, West Virginia. About 15 miles south of Morgantown is Fairmont, West Virginia, known as the pepperoni roll capital of the world. Now, pepperoni rolls were introduced in the late 1930s as a hearty snack for workers to take into the coal mines with them. Today, one of the best places to get these rolls is a great little Italian restaurant owned by John and Carrie Minas, known as Colossesinos. Here at Colossesinos, they start making the pepperoni rolls every morning about 7.30 a.m. Now, on a typical football Saturday, they'll sell nearly 900 of these buns. Now, you can get them a lot of different ways, plain, with sauce, with cheese, or the way I like them, with everything on them, including hot peppers. Mmm. Take me home, country road. <laughs> That's great. And uh, I have had those growing up in West yeah. Virginia since I was a kid. And the story is the FDA passed a regulation. That's the reason there aren't pepperoni rolls everywhere else, because nobody else can make them. Mm. All these people were grandfathered. You have to go to West Virginia. Again. Exactly. Yeah. And people do. Yeah, they do. And I'm so glad we got to do that because yeah. uh, John and Carrie Minas were great folks. And, uh, that West Virginia game is a double dose. We didn't get to air that, and West Virginia took one on the chin against Pittsburgh, but uh, glad we got it in tonight. Uh, the blow was delivered a little lower. <laughs> <laughs> and what a menu Todd had this year. He should be about 320 at this point. Uh, catfish and hus hush pup, the bacon cheddar burger. That was the one that had oh, yeah. gravy on it, wasn't it? Yeah, that, no, no. Most that, of the no, stuff that had gravy. No, that was that was the one with the homemade fries and the red cake, the red velvet cake. Oh, that's lit. right. Yeah. Well, that was that was fun. The you Arkansas Traveler. Now that had gravy on. Yeah. It. That, that had gravy on top of gravy. Yeah. That, that had gravy and gravy. <laughs> yeah, we had some good stuff. Oh, you did a great job on that. Ryan on the screen. Collender up to the 34 yard line. You know, the, the funny thing about it as we come under two minutes with the, this taste of the town was it, it it struck a chord, obviously. I mean, there are people that love college football. I mean, that's one of the things I love about college football, how passionate the fans are. But people are passionate about finding places to eat in college towns, too. And so it got to the point at the end of the year where I mean, people didn't ask me anymore about football. All they wanted to know is where I was eating that week. and Where's the place to go in this particular town? Ryan pressured and throws it away. And you're absolutely right. I'd get on an airplane in Washington, D.C., and people wouldn't talk about the game or anything else. they where's Todd Eaton this week? Where are you going? And coaches, when we would land, would be there and say, uh, do you know where Todd's having dinner tomorrow night? It was amazing yeah, it stuff. It was a phenomenon, that's for sure. It's going to be a third and two for B.C. with a minute 37 to go in the half. 
Little air guitar. Well, Callender has been kind of quiet coming out of the backfield. He had 13 catches in the championship game against Virginia Tech. What's coming? Ryan unloads and it's intercepted. Picked off by Eric Gordon, the red shirt freshman weak side linebacker, and he returns it for 17 yards. Yeah, here's Gordon right here. Now he's going to drop back, and Matt Ryan is going to be looking this way. He's not going to see the backside linebacker. He's going to see the frontside linebacker and the safety, but not the backside guy. And Eric Gordon steps right in front of the throw and makes a huge play for the Spartan defense right before halftime. You said it earlier, when you can't stretch the field and you don't have a receiver that can get deep, that defense is just more and more compact yeah. all the time. They're, they're watching for those intermediate routes and the underneath routes because they're not threatened deep the way they might be in another offense. Hoyer wants it on the first play. Oh my gosh. He's picked off. Silva was right there. He His stared second it. pick. Yeah. Silva is such an instinctive football player. I mean, there's no other way about it. Brian Hoyer, who's been struggling in the second quarter, knew he was going to Kellen Davis the whole way. He stares it down, stares it down, and Silva knew right where the ball was going as well and stepped right in front for the interception. That's just pure instincts and a guy who knows how to get to the football. Davis, the only guy that Hoyer was looking at, and Silva picked him clean. I mean, Silva is breaking on the ball just as it's leaving his fingertips. You know, the crazy thing is, I talked to Frank Spaziani earlier in the year before the Virginia Tech game of the regular season, and when he was talking about Jamie Silva, he said he's always been a hitter. He's always been a guy who's been around the ball, but, but the step he had to take this year and what the NFL scouts wanted to see in Jamie Silva was how he played the pass. Well, I'd say he answered a lot of questions about his pass defense this year. That's his eighth interception now on the year. And the Eagles did a tremendous job this year on defense intercepting passes and forcing the turnovers. Let's check in with Reese Davis. Reese. All right, Mike, coming up on the Flomax Halftime Report, we'll unearth tonight's gem and look ahead to the Emerald Bowl. And in case somehow you missed the bizarre happenings in San Diego last night, we just can't get enough of the Texas play on the sideline. Also set the table for all of the bowl games on Saturday. We're not eating as well as Todd, but Mark and Lou are here, and we'll see you just a little bit at halftime. You can't possibly eat as well or as much as Todd. Ryan again throwing underneath and completes it only out to the 24-yard line to Gunnell. I think I'd take a knee here if I'm Jeff Jagosinski now. Third down and eight, or just or actually we're going to be close to a first down here, but even if they get a first down, I'm not sure with 38 seconds left, you uh, take too many more chances. Again, you don't have that ability to make the big play down the field. It's going to be very difficult to get into field goal range at this point. Got a four-point lead. Well, I'm impressed with Jamie Silva. He, he, is a, he is a fun football player to watch, a guy who loves the game. I love the guys who are allowed to play that true free safety spot mm -hmm. where they can read the quarterback's eyes and where they can roam the field and go where they think the ball's going to go. Yep. Played at East Providence High School in Rhode Island. Was an outstanding high school football player. But as you mentioned earlier, was uh, the last scholarship given in his class to Boston College. And uh, he, if he doesn't get that, he's going somewhere much smaller. Conservative call here. They go on the draw out to about the 29 yard line, and the clock will continue to run at 20 seconds to go. And Boston College. Right, have you with us on the Flomax Halftime Report, even if it's just a few seconds early. Reese Davis, Lou Holtz, and Mark May with you. We apologize for the temporary technical difficulties that we had right before halftime. It's a 14-10 lead for Boston College in the Champs Sports Bowl. 
against Michigan State. Turnovers, the name of the first half primarily. Lou, what's been your reaction uh, to the way Michigan State has approached this game? What I'm really surprised is how well Michigan State's able to run the football and how well they've been able to defend the run against Boston College. But they're trying to put it in the hands of Brian Hoyer, the quarterback who had 18 touchdowns, seven interceptions over the course of the year. But he's already thrown two interceptions, both of them in the scoring zone. What they ought to do, you're able to run the football, control the football. I think for Boston College, we're getting exactly what we thought. Matt Ryan throwing the ball. He's relentless throwing the football. He's going to put it into tight spaces. He will make mistakes, but he'll make those spectacular plays. He has two touchdown passes in the first half. Look for more in the second half. Uh, four turnovers in the first half, and they have reached halftime in Orlando now, so you're not missing a thing. Boston College with a four-point lead. Those two picks you mentioned that Brian Hoyer threw, both of them, as you know, coming from Jamie Silva. His eight interceptions now give him a share of the lead or interceptions in the country. And remember, they count bowl game statistics. So if Jamie gets another one, he'll lead the country in picks. Still to come on the Flomax Halftime Report, we'll show you some holiday gems when we come back. Capital One Bowl Week continues through January 1st on ESPN, ESPN2, and ABC. athletic retailer of the Arena Football League. Champ Sports, where sport lives. Cypher stent is not for everyone. If you can't take antiplatelet medicine or have certain allergies, it's not for you. Its risks include the formation of a blood clot in the stent, heart attack, and a repeat procedure. Talk to your doctor about these risks and whether this or other treatments are right for you. Dual processor. Dell, yours is here. Hurry up, kids! Going nowhere with expired credit card miles? Whew. Get Capital One's No Hassle Rewards with no miles expiration, no earn caps, and no blackout dates. They should switch to Capital One. What's in your wallet? Welcome back to the Flomax Halftime Report. We got coming up tonight what to watch for the Emerald Bowl, 8.30 Eastern Time. Everybody knows it's Maryland and Oregon State in the Emerald Bowl. Oregon State, tough against the run, second best in the nation. They are third in sacks. Maryland's had a terrible time protecting the passer this year. 107th in sacks allowed. Here's Rob Stone. We're in San Francisco outside of AT&T Park in McCovey Cove. And when you're here, you're usually thinking kayaks and baseballs. Forget it. It's December. We're thinking sailboats and footballs. Both Maryland and Oregon State will throw out sophomore QBs that began the season on the bench. Napoleon Dynamite looking like Chris Turner started the Terps campaign third on the depth chart but took over in their win at then number 10 Rutgers and hasn't looked back. Oregon State's Lyle Moivau hasn't been at the helm as long but he's yet to be defeated. The JC transfer who won't shy away from contact will be making his fourth straight start. 
One last note, Oregon State senior running back Evanson Bernard, despite having knee surgery just two days before Thanksgiving, will get the start and go the distance for the Beavers. Got to go get that baseball, guys. I'll see you. Oh, see, that was weak. Yeah, I, come on. I on a boat with Rob Stone. I'd toss him overboard. No, we ooh, love ooh. we love Stone. I Evans, love Rob. Uh, we all do. Evanson Bernard coming back. That's a huge deal. Uh, who do you guys like in this game? Mark, start with you. I like Oregon State in this game because Evanson Bernard, the running back, is coming back. He had over 1,000 yards rushing in just 10 games. Yes, he hurt his knee in November, but he's back healthy for this one. You can't count on the Oregon State quarterbacks. They've thrown for 20 interceptions and only 10 touchdown passes. Yeah, but they also won six of the last seven games. After going 0-2 in the conference, to start off. Coming back winning six of the last seven is very, very impressive. Maryland's had a wonderful year, but they're up and they're down. How do you beat Boston College and all of a sudden you get beat by North Carolina? All right, Maryland's going to come into this game. They only had three guys on their offense that started all 12 games on offense. So Maryland's sort of been in flux. They've played better down the stretch of the season. Emerald Bowl, Maryland, Oregon State tonight at 8.30 Eastern time on ESPN. Last night, the game that was in prime time, Arizona State and Texas in the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl. Mac Brown in Texas. I, he instituted the 6 a.m. practices, said every job was open. Longhorns came out with an attitude. Jamal Charles, 15 yards, breaking tackles, 21-0. Arizona State trying to get back in it. Rush gets to Rudy Carpenter. Ball gets loose. Texas is going to recover it, take it into Arizona State territory. They're about to blow this game wide open. But... But you must be sound in the get back game. Nobody gets back. Chris, Je no, what are you doing? Chris Jesse, Mac Brown steps on, almost touched the ball. So what's the rule? The ruling on the field has been reversed. While the ball was loose during a backward pass, a member of the coaching staff of Texas touched the ball. By rule, this is an unsportsmanlike act. You know, Matt Brown was saying, and I got him a Christmas present, too. Oh, poor Chris Jesse, because you know what's going to happen on the next play, Mark? Arizona State's going <laughs> to score a touchdown. Forks. They had all the momentum in the world, much to Jesse's chagrin. The one thing that changes around, you see the great catch by Chris McGahey, is that after Texas went three and out, was about to go three and out a second time, they faked the punt, kept the drive alive, and then Colt McCoy, late in the second quarter, paid it off by running for a touchdown. McCoy at Lou, I thought, even though he fumbled the ball four times last night, but he was just as impressive with his speed as he was with his arm. Oh, definitely. Uh, here he makes a great run. He fumbled the ball four times, but fortunately they recovered three of them, including this one for the touchdown. Texas wins at 52-34. Nobody cared about that. They just wanted to hear, what was Chris Jesse thinking? Chris, just how badly did you feel when, when all of that went down? I felt pretty poorly. I, w I was not real excited about the whole thing. Uh, you know, I, th I thought momentum was going to swing, and, and this is such a game of momentum. Did. They it did. On it that did. Very they next scored. Play. They scored on the next play. I thought, you know, we needed to get back out and, and get another touchdown on the board and, uh, and and get momentum back. And and once I saw us starting to play and 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 really we we handled the game throughout. I felt so. It is what it is. We got a victory. That's all that really matters. The focus should be on the kids. Jamal and Colt had a great game. The defense played lights out. So that's that's what the focus should be on. And you're going on record, Chris, to say you did not did touch not, that ball. No, I did not touch the ball. Well, the replay official said that he did. I guess that's neither here nor there. You know, we've kind of gone back and forth having fun and also uh, saying how the sideline etiquette should be. The one thing you have to say, uh, Chris didn't run to the locker room, not even when things looked bad in the first half. He did the interview afterwards. He stepped oh. up. I guess. Yeah, you definitely want to stay in the public eye. You don't want to get off this side where the people don't know what's going to happen to you. But let's remember this also. Texas already had a sideline warning. You look at that, that's nonsense. The coaches are allowed three feet within the sideline. Everybody else is a minimum of six feet. you got to have room for the officials to run up and down. The get-back coach should have had him get oh, the back. Get back. Get back. Be the ideal get, get, back get that coach. guy fired. Yeah. But bottom line, Chris Jesse, you're very lucky it's not Sunday morning Sports Center because you get my bonehead of the year <laughs> without a doubt. You're on the sidelines. There's a reason why it's called a sideline credential. Stay off the field. Well, you know, if, uh, if Chris, if poor Chris had had his team then turn around and lose, he might have retired that bonehead oh, yeah. trophy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now it's just a, it's just a humorous footnote yeah. in some of the uh, annals and lore of college football. No Christmas spirit, no compassion of poor kids. He felt bad. I mean, you guys are He did poor feel kids. bad. Now he feels worse when May Day gets on you. If they lost the game, Mac would have just fired him. He wouldn't be on the sidelines. No, Luckily, they no. won the game. He may be demoted to being up in a press box for the rest of his career. Yeah, you don't do that to your wife's son. You just don't. <laughs> <laughs> 
Let's check out the Bowl Challenge Cup. And despite the fact that Texas had a little bit of an adventure, they got the Big 12 off to a 1-0 start. Mountain West Conference, they have jumped out of the gate. They have the 3-0 record with two games left to play. Bowl Challenge Cup, in case you've forgotten, goes to the conference with the best winning percentage with at least three teams playing in bowl games. We'll look ahead to Saturday. Full slate of bowls. We'll break some of them down for you on the Flowmax Halftime Report. That's coming up when you come back. This Halftime Report brought to you by Flowmax. Going over and over? It's not just you. Stopping and starting? Going urgently? You're not alone. Lots of guys experience male urinary symptoms due to BPH, also known as an enlarged prostate. But for many guys, prescription Flomax may relieve urinary symptoms due to BPH in one week. And who doesn't want to spend less time in the bathroom? Only your doctor can tell if you have BPH, not prostate cancer. Common side effects of Flomax are runny nose, dizziness, and decrease in semen. Upon standing, a sudden drop in blood pressure may occur, rarely resulting in fainting. So when starting Flomax, avoid situations where injury could result. If considering cataract surgery, tell your eye surgeon you've taken Flomax. Do what millions of guys have already done. Ask your doctor about Flomax and call 877-4-FLOMAX for a free one-week trial. Why wait? Join the crowd. Flomax could make a difference in one week. headsets. Find all the stuff you need for all the stuff you got at your neighborhood Radio Shack. Do stuff. There are 380,000 NCAA student athletes. And most of us and most of will, us go, will pro. go pro in something, something other, than, other sports. than sports. In something other than sports. Go to NCAAstudent.org to find out how. Coming up, the Meineke Car Care Bowl, Saturday 1, a, or 1 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN. It's UConn and Wake Forest, two teams who thrive on creating turnovers. And Quinn Kesting tells us the conditions might be ripe for that. Second driest year on record in North Carolina. Charlotte bracing for overnight rains. In fact, it's starting to rain right now. These conditions expected to continue until kickoff. For Wake Forest, how will Kenny Moore handle the muddy field? He's Mr. Everything for the Demon Deacons. 87 catches. He's dangerous in their reverse game, their orbit offense. He's a threat on kick returns as well. He expects 15 touches on Saturday. Meanwhile, UConn, nine wins. UConn stands for you confident, and they are singing in the rain. Their three biggest wins, Louisville, South Florida, and Rutgers, all played in muddy conditions. Randy Etzel told me this morning, let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. Uh, Randy Etzel is rain man. He always brings it. The AutoZone Liberty Bowl, UCF and Mississippi State. Kevin Smith needs 181 yards to have a season in which he rushed for more yards than anyone in the history of big-time football. Here's Vince Well. Here at the AutoZone Liberty Bowl in Memphis, where the hot topic of conversation along Beale Street is the running game. As Central Florida and Mississippi State prepare to square off, Central Florida is led by running back Kevin Smith. He's the nation's leading rusher and needs just 181 yards to break Barry Sanders' single season record. Mississippi State is expected to put an extra man in the box to try to limit Smith at the line of scrimmage. And gap responsibilities will be key for the Bulldogs' defense. If Smith gets past the first two lines of defense, he'll be a very tough takedown for that Mississippi State secondary. Remember the Alamo Bowl, the Valero Alamo Bowl, where I believe the participants were given as gifts the Wii game system. Joe Paterno, he, he knows all about Wii. He leads Wii to a lot of bowl games. Here's Aaron Andrews. Well, 
Maurice, the New England Patriots aren't the only ones going for history on Saturday night. The Valero Alamo Bowl will be the 500th game for Joe Paterno as head coach of the Nittany Lions. He becomes the second major college coach to reach that milestone. Now to quote Joe Pa for crying out loud, I don't care if it's my 500th game or my fifth, let's not make it a big deal. One of the reasons why Paterno may feel that way, back in 1959, he was an assistant coach for Penn State. His team was going up against Bear Bryant in Alabama. Paterno felt there was way too much emphasis on what a legend Bryant was. But keep in mind, all this week, Joe Pa has been asked, at 81, can you still do it? He said, if I couldn't, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> Texas A&M, of course, Penn State's opponent going through the coaching transition. Mike Sherman will eventually take over there. Gary Darnell coaching that game. 816 coaching changes in college football since Joe Paterno was hired by Penn State. Out of all of these games that we just mentioned tomorrow, which one do you think is going to be the most intriguing to you, Lou? That's about 10 of the coaching changes I want you to <laughs> <laughs> But I think there's going to be two great games. I think Wake Forest and uh, Connecticut is going to be a great game. I think Central Florida, Mississippi State, as far as Penn State and Texas A&M, I just think Joe Paterno is too well organized. The I'm looking forward to Liberty Bowl. I'm looking forward to see if Kevin Smith of Central Florida can break the all-time single-season rushing record of Barry Sanders with 181 yards. I know, Reese, you're looking forward to that game because I guess he's got an extra couple of games to help him out this season. You're trying to figure out the mathematics, right? Yeah, I have 14 right there. See, I'm giving. I want you to remember. Now wait. Now Babe Ruth had 154 games. That's true. I mean, you had more. So fewer than Barry Bonds and fewer That's than... That's right. It doesn't yeah. matter. The total is all that count. It's still a great know, accomplishment if it, it you is, can get absolutely. to 180. It's, it's already a great accomplishment yes, because he's the nation's leading rusher. He's an outstanding back. 29 rushing touchdowns. I just think it's fair to say... He's coming back next the year. The other thing, if they did the other thing that they do now and give you credit for your bowl game yardage, Sanders' number would be even higher because he had over 200 yards in his bowl game. So year. critical you are. I'm just trying to set the record straight. Why not? Oh, boy, you're one to talk. <laughs>for the next 60 seconds. That's all the time I have to tell you the truth about HD television. The truth your cable company doesn't want you to hear. Cable wants you to believe they're keeping up with HD capacity. They're not. But DirecTV is. Get the best entertainment and the most HD channels with DirecTV. That includes exclusive sports with games and matchups you won't see on cable. So call now for all your favorite sports, movies, and shows. And you always get your local channels. Do you know what else? Packages start at only $29.99 per month. Plus, call now and ask how you can get 32 premium movie channels free for three months. There are no startup costs, no equipment to buy, and professional installation is free. Call now. You also get a free HD receiver or DirecTV DVR upgrade from America's number one HD provider. Time's up. Make the call. This halftime report brought to you by Flomax. In the main event, talented heavyweight veteran Dominic Wynn takes on tough spoiler Robert Big Billy Hawkins. Plus, live in our studio, future Hall of Famer Roy Jones Jr. getting ready to face longtime legend Felix Tito Trinidad. Tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern, ESPN2. And in the undercard on uh, ESPN.com, you can see the Holtz may bound on Friday Night Fights, too. <laughs> Matt Ryan with a touchdown pass. BC's up by four. <laughs>
Introducing the Samsung Juke. Hey. Samsung, leading the music phone revolution. Nobody gives you more power than interstate batteries. And we have a national warranty program with over 200,000 dealers to back it up. How do we make them so powerful? <laughs> now that's a secret. And here's another secret. We've got every battery for every need. Interstate Batteries, the official battery of Joe Gibbs Racing. Kids, we're going to visit the land of our ancestors. Ireland? No, credit card miles expired. Think more distant relatives. This is great! Hey, it's me, Cousin Bob! Going down. We gotta switch to Capital One. Get Capital One's no hassle rewards with no miles expiration, no earned caps, and no blackout dates. See, kids, first class all the way. Something smells good. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Welcome back to ESPN's presentation of Capital One Bowl Week. Welcome back to beautiful Orlando, Florida and the Champ Sports Bowl, our halftime stats. Not a lot to write home about for either team except in the turnover category. Michigan State was dominating this ball game, but they turned it over three times and let Boston College back into it, and they took advantage. Yeah, and that's the big key, I think, for Michigan State in the second half. Coming into the ball game, only 13 turnovers in 12 games, three in the first half tonight. So uh, they've got to correct that. And I really think what they've got to do is also get back to – they were about 50-50 run past the first half. they got to go a little bit heavier to the run because they did – Run the football with some effectiveness. Yes, they got to go did. back to that. Boston College didn't run it worth a lick in the first half against Michigan State. I think we're going to see Matt Ryan throw it just about every down when they have the football in the second half. Silva with two big plays on those picks. One in the end zone and the other one was near the end zone. Bolesky will kick it off. <laughs> Robinson at the one. Pinned at the sideline and knocked out a bounce shy of the 25 yard line. Well, Matt Ryan started off a little bit slow in this game, four of seven in the first quarter, but then he started to get heated up, facing a lot of different defensive looks. The quick release, had a couple touchdown passes in the first half. This was a beautiful throw off the scramble to Gunnell for his second touchdown. He did throw the interception late in the half, his 19th of the season, but uh, picks don't phase Matt Ryan. I mean, when you, when you throw it as much as he does, you know they're going to get picked off from time to time. He made a bad decision, and he paid for it, but Silva got it right back for him. Collender wrapped up before he had a chance to go anywhere. O.G. Nuwalbo. The 300-pound senior made the tackle. You know, we've talked about guys who were instinctive players and really understand the game. If you're a guy like Matt Ryan, some quarterbacks are products of systems. Yeah. But you get the feeling this guy could play in any system. He's a very instinctive guy. He understands the game. Yeah, I mean, now he would have trouble playing in a spread-type offense. Oh, sure. You know, I mean, that kind of a system. But any kind of a pro-style, pass-oriented, West Coast-style offense, yeah, yeah he's going to be fine. Straight back to throw this time to the sideline to his running back. Let's go to Holly Rowe. Well, guys, I caught up with Coach Jeff Jagosinski at the half. He said he liked his team's composure in the first half coming back after Michigan State came out with all that momentum. He did say, though, they weren't effective running the ball, and he needs to run it more in the second half. We saw the first place in scrimmage was a run. Now, for Mark D'Antonio, he was concerned about how fresh his team would be. They've been off for 40 days. He said he asked them at the half, and they all said, Coach, we're good. They played 40 plays on offense, 40 plays on defense. He said, I like where we're at right now. We just got to run the football better. All right, Holly, thanks very much. Third and seven. And Ryan will go to the shotgun. 
Michigan State will come with three and they'll blow the play dead. Yeah, movement by the right tackle, Anthony Costanzo, the freshman. Ball start, offense, number 74. It'll be a five yard penalty, third down. You know, I think in, in back to what Holly was reporting about the coaches and their concerns about the running game. I, I think for Boston College, it's they've got to run the ball better. And for Michigan State, they've got to run the ball more because I do think they ran the ball OK. Uh, they, they just got a little bit too much with Brian Hoyer, who, who lost his his uh, confidence there in the second quarter. And I think they've got to get it back by running the football when they get it back here. Third and 12. Again, they come with three. Ryan throws underneath. And it's incomplete as Warwick comes up and makes the hit. It's a good throw by Matt Ryan, but the safety's really squeezing on that slant route right there for the big hit by Warwick as the ball got there. May have been a case of hearing footsteps yeah. as well. Ayers to kick to Thomas. Ayers had that horrible punt near the end of the first half. But a very good athlete gets this one out of there. Good kick, good coverage. Outstanding coverage and a good tackle by Robert Francois. Return of one after a punt of 41. 39 yard Return. Hoyer got off to a great start in this ball game. Hit his first four, including a touchdown pass, but only three of his last 14. Again, he's a guy that uh, saw him play in high school, played for a great high school football program in Ohio. Cleveland St. Ignatius, Chuck Kyle, the head coach there. In fact, his starting defensive end for BC, Jim Ramella, number 86, also was a teammate at St. Ignatius. Ringer the tailback. He'll get the toss. Ringer cuts it back into B.C. territory at the 43. And, Todd, I think you're absolutely right. They were so successful early running the ball, which I thought set up Hoyer's yeah. passing. And, and they hit some early, you know. And, and I think they tried to keep it 50-50, and then Hoyer lost his hot hand. And this is their strength. 200 yards a game rushing, fourth best in the Big Ten. A big, strong offensive line and, and two backs that are both equally uh, good at carrying the football. So you can keep both Colcrick and Ringer fresh running the football. Jesse Miller, the right tackle, had a good block on this one. Ringer again. And again with good running room, he's got another first down as he rips off 11 to the 32. Kenny Shane, the left guard, pulled out in front and got a good block. This is a little bit more like a spread type play out of the shotgun, a shotgun run. Nice job of Ringer just waiting in there and hanging behind his blockers. Has a tendency to get lost in there at five foot nine behind some big offensive linemen. And look at the running back advantage for the Spartans. Colcrick and Ringer have racked up 110 yards. Direct snap this time. Why not? Yeah, why not is right. At this point, the way it's working, just feed him. And Javon Ringer has gone for 17, 11, and 14 on the first three plays for Michigan State. Yeah, not much deception here. Snap the ball to 23, and then just let him run. Gets a nice block by Jeff McPherson, number 35, the fullback. And Jesse Miller, the right tackle, one of the anchors on that offensive line. Three plays, three good runs. One of those For Darren McFadden today. direct yeah. snaps. Colcrick will give Ringer a breather here, but not the defense because he can do it too. Colcrick, nice head fake. Boy, he turned absolutely nothing into four yeah. yards. And when, nothing. And when he hesitated, I thought he made a mistake because he doesn't have quite the same burst to the outside that Ringer has. But he still was able to get his shoulders turned upfield. I thought he, when he started to go east and west here, he was making a mistake, but he quickly righted the ship, got going north and south, and turned it into a positive game. Took it down to the 13-yard line, second and five. Michigan State is in two tight ends, one back, two wide receivers. I mean, this is uh, 
balances out the defense and just says we're coming right at you. Cole Crick again tripped over his own blocker the center John Masters as he tried to cut back toward the right side. And so far the only one successful at stopping the Michigan State running back has been the offensive center. And that'll get Ringer back in on third and five. Ringer much better as a third down back with 34 catches on the year. Culprit only four out of the backfield. Now they spread the field a little more. And they'll give it to Ringer on the straight ahead running play. Needed to reach the eight yard line for a first down. They'll mark him just inside the 10. So here's a decision from Mark D'Antonio. They have run the ball very well on this drive. Do you try to run it on fourth down or do you go for a no, I think you kick it pretty here. easy if, field goal. Yeah, if you don't, if you don't have it, I think you kick the football. It doesn't look like you're gonna kick though. I mean. We just started the third quarter. And BC will bring in a little more beef in the middle of that line. Culprit checks in as the tailback. The blocking back is McPherson. This is strength against strength right here. And Culprit, the big guy. Got it. McPherson with the lead block and if the yellow line is accurate and almost is always perfect they've got the first down. He wants a timeout Mark D'Antonio right before the play I think he was having some second thoughts about whether to kick and take the points here or whether to go for it. it looks, uh, I didn't want it anyway. Yeah. Well we'll see. Looked like he got it half the length of a football man. I understand you have momentum and that you've had a nice drive and that you've run the football well. And it worked out. I just think I would have taken the field goal and made it a one point game at that point. Let's go to Holly. Well, when I was talking to Mark D'Antonio at the half of Michigan State, he said, we've gotten in the red zone and we haven't been able to convert. That's our biggest problem in this football game. So I wasn't surprised at all that he went for it there because at halftime he was so irritated. And you could just see from the look on his face, he's got that kind of biting his bottom lip that he was going for that. Well, fourth and one is usually a test of wills. And I thought they might go for it because he'd been so successful. But I also have to agree with Todd that you've got to go for the cheap shot or a chip shot field goal. Here's Ringer again, direct snap. Hoyer is out as a wide receiver. He'll come to the left, got a couple of good blocks in front, but BC strung it out well enough and made the tackles, particularly Shane, through a great block for him. Giles, the backup defensive end, and Herzlick made the tackle. There's a great story about Giles, number 52, the defensive end. In his first collegiate game last year, his aunt was in a hospital that didn't have ESPN, and her boss paid for the hospital to install the satellite so that they could get ESPN. I mean, what kind of hospital do you go to that doesn't have ESPN? How are you going to heal That's right. without ESPN? Come on. Second and goal. Hoyer back in there. Tailback straight ahead to the six as Ringer gets the carry. Ninth. Now they're in a third and long situation. Ninth play of the drive. Every single play a run. You know, they got that first down on fourth down, but that put him inside the 10, first and goal. We talked about that early in the game, how difficult that is from that part of the field. When the reason it's difficult is trying to throw the football from inside the 10. The defense doesn't have to defend depth. They don't have to defend the vertical part of the field. It's very easy to clamp down on, on pass routes. Keep an eye on Kellen Davis now, number 80, the tight end. He's in the slot. There he is right over here, big target down around the red zone. And a great matchup. Boyer looks his way, then throws ball, tipped in the air and incomplete. And now they'll have to go yeah. for the field goal. Jolon Dunbar got a hand up and tipped the ball up in the air. He's trying to get the ball to Devin Thomas. They brought three receivers in the same area. He was going to the back of the end zone to Thomas and Jolon Dunbar with a nice tip of the football. 
Big play by the senior linebacker. We tried to squeeze that one in there and it just wasn't going to fit. Yep. Swenson has already been successful from 39. This is 23. It's 67% of his tries this year. Tough angle. And this one is through. So Michigan State with an impressive first possession here in the third quarter results in the field goal. And the Spartans have cut the lead to one. Naturally nutritious, planters, instinctively good. of law school teach you a lot. For him, it's confidence. For me, it's pride. Go to ncaastudent.org to find out how your child could become one of the many student athletes who go pro in something other than sports. ESPN's college football presentation of the Champ Sports Bowl is available on ESPN HD, presented by Pioneer Kuro HD TV. Boston College is going for its eighth consecutive bowl win. They are currently tied with Utah with seven consecutive victories. Utah started off the uh, the bowl season with a big win over. Navy. Another one of those fantastic finishes yeah. that we've had this year. Collander, the deep man, Boleski, will kick it off. Good kick. Taking three yards deep, they'll take it there. Capital One Bowl Week featuring over 20 bowl games in just 12 days on the ESPN Fam Networks. Continues next with the Maryland Terrapins against the Oregon State Beavers. That's the Emerald Bowl, part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN, coming up next. Oregon State kind of quietly had a pretty solid year defensively. Played excellent defense, particularly run defense throughout the year. Ralph Friedgen, always known as a top offensive kind of coach again Maryland one of the teams that beat Boston College during that stretch in November scored 42 points on Boston College's defense Ryan play action under pressure then launches and it was intended for Gunnell who had a step yeah he's he's the guy Gunnell is the guy that that has gotten behind the defense a couple times now one was on a scramble adjustment that time just man to man coverage against Ashton Henderson number 31 no safety help and Gunnell had a step but the ball overthrown by Matt Ryan and again Boston College really doesn't have the guy that is going to scare a secondary to death. Handed off this time to Whitworth and L.V. Whitworth across the 30. Looks like he has a first down. Travis Key 
the 5'10 senior made the stop. You know, L.V. Whitworth is a, a senior who earlier on his career was more the feature guy in this offense. Sure was. And, uh, and it was just this year that Andre Callender really took over as the feature back, both as a receiver and a runner. Injuries are part of the problem for L.V. Whitworth. But uh, one of those guys that a lot of guys really benefit from that extra time between the end of the season and playing in a bowl game to get healed up and plus practicing in the sunshine doesn't hurt too bad either. Yeah, absolutely. And he's just been healthy, healthy really the last month. Incomplete. Again intended for Megwa and great coverage by Nehemiah Warwick who was with him stride for stride. But a nice job though by Jeff Logan trying to or Steve Logan trying to loosen up the Michigan State defense two plays out of the last four throwing the ball deep at least challenging down the field that time excellent coverage by Warwick a couple plays ago Gunnell had a step but the ball was overthrown but they've got to try to stretch this Michigan State defense a little bit they've only had one completion in the game for over 13 yards Ryan gives it off to Whitworth but you Let's go uh, to Holly Rowe. Holly. Well, guys, the new offensive coordinator for Boston College, Steve Logan, is such an interesting guy. We love talking to him. He said one of the reasons Andre Collender is the premier back this year is he has this tradition. He lines up his running backs. He makes them go out on a short option route, and whoever can run a route and catch the ball becomes his starting quarterback. Now, he actually taught me how to run the option route yesterday. It wasn't pretty, but he said that's all their offense is, those short option routes, and you got to be able to do it if you want to play for Steve Logan. Holly, I bet you caught everything, didn't you? Ryan under some pressure throws underneath. That'll be enough yep. for a first down. Good throw by Ryan as he got the ball out on time and completed it to Jarvis. Yeah, nice job by the offensive line picking up the pressure. Michigan State came with six. Everybody picked up. And that's one-on-one -on -one coverage working against Ross Weaver for the completion. You go back a couple of plays, Todd, when Megwell was being covered by Warwick. That's a safety on a wide receiver, yeah. and he wasn't threatened at all deep. Beautiful timing. Megwell will catch this one. See, the reason you throw those deep ones yep. is so you can throw the comeback. Because now they have to at least respect that you'll try to run by him, and now you run the deep comeback. They have not thrown a deep comeback until right now. Play action pass. It's about a 22 yards back to 18 comeback. But the only way that you can run a comeback is if they have some respect that you'll try to run deep on it. They tried to run deep on Henderson a few plays ago. That set up the comeback. And conversely, the comeback can set up a double move yeah. and a deep pass. Tenth different receiver to catch a ball from Ryan in his game. And Ryan again. again. Here's the deep one. I love it. Gunnell through his hands. Flat. Ross Weaver had the coverage, and it looked like a perfect throw yeah. from Ryan. What a touch on the deep ball. I just love the strategy by Steve Logan and Matt Ryan right now. They're challenging. They're saying, you know what? We're not going to settle for the horizontal stuff. So what if we don't have the, the blazing speed guys? We have guys who are quick, who can get off the line of scrimmage. There's a little contact before the ball gets there. Not much. Not much is right. But you're right. The fact that the ball was thrown perfectly by Matt Ryan probably aided in that call against Michigan State. It is not a spot foul like the NFL. It is a penalty from the line of scrimmage. And the first flag against Michigan State in this ballgame. That's something that they are very proud of that they have cut down on their penalties this year under the new coaching staff. But it is a first down for B.C. just outside the 25 yard line. Blitz coming. Ryan unloads, completes it again down to the 10 yard line. And it's a perfect strike to Gunnell. So Gunnell on the wide side of the field seeing yeah. a little more action. I'll tell you who's doing a nice job too is L.V. Whitworth, number 30, is the other guy picking up pressure on the outside. You got the five linemen and the fullback Whitworth that's blocking on the edge, giving time for Matt Ryan to throw against single coverage. Gannell runs the slant. Too much cushion that time by Weaver. And again, Matt Ryan, if you give him time to set his feet and get in rhythm, he's a deadly accurate passer. Got Whitworth in there right now as the fullback. 
And Collender as the tailback. Collender on the screen. That was not set up well. Kabatsnik made another good stop. BC has hit more passes over 10 yards on this drive than they had hit all the rest of the ball game. And it's the only drive where they've taken shots deep down the yeah. field. They haven't hit any of them, but they've taken their shots down the field and they've stretched out this defense a little bit. Four man rush. Ryan underneath and right through the hands of Megwa. And Oren Wilson's got to be careful because he came over right in Megwa's face and said something after the play. Well, this is an option route for the inside slot receiver. And again, another perfect pass by Matt Ryan. And Megwa just loses concentration. He's working on the linebacker. That's a mismatch. Wide receiver against linebacker. He gets separation. He's open. Ryan hits him with the football. Megwa doesn't make the catch. Third down now. Ryan tried to buy time again and throws incomplete as he was looking for Robinson. Well, he didn't want to take a sack. He's in field goal range for Oppenovicet pitches. Suffer who? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you said it because I'd have done it sooner or later. Oppa Navicious. Steve. Yes. Steve A. Will try from 28. And he knocks it through. So both kickers have been solid tonight. It's 17-13 with 5-10 to go third quarter. BC with the lead. athletic retailer of the Arena Football League. Champ Sports, where sport lives. The new Philips Norelco Architect, a shaver with flexible heads which pivot and rotate freely to give you a great shave even on the neck. Simplicity is making hard to reach places easy to reach. Okay, what's a three letter word for- Honey, would you run out and get me something crunchy? Crunchy? And chewy. Crunchy and chewy. And cheesy. Crunchy, chewy, cheesy. Crunchy, chewy, cheesy. And melty. Given to your cravings, it's Taco Bell's Cheesy Gordita Crunch, and it's only around for a limited time. Get yours before they're gone. When I was just a little girl, I asked my mother, XPS1, powered by an Intel Core 2 dual processor. Dell, yours is here. The new Philips Norelco Architect, a shaver with flexible heads which pivot and rotate freely to give you a great shave even on the neck. Simplicity is making hard to reach places easy to reach. Capital One Bowl Week continues. Two more games tomorrow afternoon at 1 Eastern UConn against Wake Forest in the Meineke Car Care Bowl. Then at 4.30, UCF against Mississippi State in the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. Coverage starts with the Sports Center College Football Special at noon Eastern. It's going to be fun seeing Mississippi State in that bowl game and Sylvester Croom having a chance to take his team to one of those. Yeah. You know we're here in Orlando and this is the uh, the home city of Central Florida the Golden Knights 
10 wins on the season under George O'Leary. Kevin Smith, what a season he's had. Tremendous. 30 rushing touchdowns and 181 yards away to break the single season rushing record held by Barry Sanders, a record that nobody ever thought would ever get touched. No. You're right, Mississippi State. I mean, they, they earned their way into a bowl game. That, that's great to see. Bulldogs deserve it. Devin Thomas waiting at the four. From the 12. Up to the 31, maybe the 32 yard line. Got a timeout. 5.02 to go third quarter. Will Michigan State stay with the run? What's up, man? Hey, dude. Having a place to store perishable food items. Priority number 43. Having a place to store perishable anatomy class items? Priority number one. Sorry, man. Get the money you need with a Monticello student loan. Use it for education-related expenses. And the best part is, you can pay it back after you graduate. When savings, scholarships, and federal loans aren't enough, it's the smart way to borrow. Apply with a cosigner and you could get a better rate. Monticello Student Loans, when education is priority number one. Call 888-727-2926 or log on to 30monticelloloans.com. Kids, we're going to visit the land of our ancestors. Ireland? No, credit card miles expired. Think more distant relatives. <laughs> this is great! Hey, it's me, Cousin Bob! Going down. We gotta switch to Capital One. Get Capital One's no hassle rewards with no miles expiration, no earned caps, and no blackout dates. See, kids, first class all the way. Something smells good. <laughs> Capital One Bowl Week continues with a triple header Saturday on ESPN. First at 1, UConn and Wake Forest clash in the Meineke Car Care Bowl. Then at 4.30, it's the AutoZone Liberty Bowl with Central Florida and Mississippi State. And at 8, Penn State meets Texas A&M in the Valero Alamo Bowl. The Spartans will take over at their own 31-yard line, 5.02 to go third quarter. And Boston College with a four-point lead now. Ringer will start this series is the tailback. Last drive, Michigan State got a field goal. Eight runs, only one pass. The change up right now. Hoyer has it picked. Threw it right to the linebacker, Kevin Akins. And Akins with a 17 yard return. Hoyer tends to stare down that receiver, and that time Akins just followed his eyes. Well, we just mentioned the running game and how successful they were running it in that last drive. This time they try to go play action, and he's staring at Devin Thomas. He wants to get the football to number five. They want him to touch it double-digit times. He's not been involved in the game too much. Boston College knows that as well. And Akins, reading the quarterback, stepped right in front for the interception. The fourth turnover of the ball game. For Michigan State, again, they only turned it over 13 times in the first 12 games. And Hoyer right now in the midst of an awful streak. He's hit three out of 16 passes, his last 16, and three interceptions. So BC using the turnovers to an advantage. Ryan Pressure throws on the run and incomplete. Intended for Gunnell. We talked about Matt Ryan. One of the things that stands out to him about is his quick release. He gets rid of the football. He's a very difficult guy to sack because he sees the field and the ball comes out of his hands very quickly. 
He knows he's got free releases by his backs a lot, and so they might get an extra rusher in there on him quite a bit. He has to get rid of the football quickly, and he does that play after play. Very hard to sack Matt Ryan. Over the middle, incomplete. He was trying to get challenger another one of those possession type receivers over the middle but he couldn't complete the pattern he was bumped yeah you see his numbers 19 to 36 he's thrown it pretty much all over the place I mean he doesn't uh, discriminate and he doesn't have a favorite target per se I mean coming into the game Andre Callender was his main guy with over 70 catches but he's been pretty quiet tonight Michigan State has focused on him and the balls had to go elsewhere for Matt Ryan tonight Ryan now takes off and got yep. maybe a yard and a half or two yards. That's great coverage and great discipline by the Michigan State defense because when Matt Ryan scrambles, unlike a lot of quarterbacks in college football, he scrambles with his eyes downfield, always wanting to throw the ball first and run it second. Michigan State's defensive coordinator, Pat Narduzzi, knew that. He's, he's schooled his team on that over the last couple of weeks. When he scrambles, don't leave coverage. Stay with your man and make him run the football. And that time, they forced him to run out of bounds. Jeff Jagosinski is going to go for it from here. About a 43-yard uh, field goal, maybe 44. So he'd rather have Matt Ryan try for it. Still looking. Throws to the sideline intended for Purvis, but he's out of bounds. Pretty good. Thornhill got yep. the coverage. Yes, he did a nice job. You know, the thing that Thornhill knew is he had the sideline as an aid. And, and really, that was Purvis adjusting to the scramble and turning up field. Matt Ryan was looking left first, didn't have anything. He moves out of the pocket. And when he did that, Purvis adjusted his route. But Caleb Thornhill did a nice job of staying with the tight end and using the sideline as a defender to help him and force the ball out of bounds. So they turn it over on downs at the 26 yard line. And Michigan State dodged a bullet on that turnover again. And now they'll go back to the ground. Ringer can't get away, taken down at the 26-yard line by Paul Anderson, the strong safety. Here's Holly. Well, the Michigan State Spartans have played heavily off that movie 300 that was so popular about the Battle of Thermopylae where the Spartans held off a horde for a few days. Well, they had an interesting thing before the game. It is, this is a tradition they've started. It's called a phylinx. It's kind of patterned after that ancient medieval battle mode where the warriors get together with their shields. It's meant to mean that... We're only as strong as the man next to you. And guys, they do it before the game. They did it across the end zone as well when they got into uniform. It means a lot to them. We've got a pretty good mascot to carry that off, too. Another direct snap by Turinger. This time they faked the handoff to Devin Thomas. So they're they're really going Arkansas yeah. on us here. Dunbar led the charge defensively. Joe Long was the first man there on the tackle. Boston College has to be thinking defensively right now if you're Frank Spaziani that that Michigan State is probably not going to throw unless they absolutely have to right now because Brian Hoyer is a guy who has thrown it to the wrong jersey a couple times tonight and has not been hot since early in the ball game. Now on third and long expect to throw but on other downs expect that run. From the four man rush Hoyer over the middle. And they've got a first down. Nice move by Ringer after he made the catch to get that extra yardage, and he picks up 18. He did not have the first down yep. when he initially caught the ball. Nice job by Hoyer just getting the ball to the check down. Ringer is just a check down receiver, an outlet receiver. Get it to him and let him try to make somebody miss. Let him be a football player. When he caught it, he didn't have the first down. When he hit the ground, he did. Second team all Big Ten. Ringer came into this game averaging over 112 yards a game. That was fourth in the conference. Ringer on the toss. Trying to cut it back. Boston College 
has done a really good job on those cutback lanes. Yeah. They haven't let him have that much room to run. Let's go to Holly. Well, Javon Ringer is becoming a huge concern for defensive coordinator Frank Spaziani of Boston College. Before this series, he was talking to the defense, and he kept saying, hey, nice job on 23. But we got to do this on 23. And then when 23 does this, he must have said 23 about five times in his little speech to the defense. And then one of the guys asked a question, are we supposed to change our defense? Coach, he said, no, no, we're still going to play our defense, but we're also going to play 23. <laughs> Frank always wears that towel so his defensive players can pick him out. But I got a question. Nobody else looks like Spaziani, so why does he need the towel? The draw play this time to uh, Culcrit. Frank was one of the two holdovers from Tom O'Brien's staff. He and Bill McGovern, who's the linebacker coach, both were here with Tom O'Brien at Boston College. Both did not want to relocate to uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, and go with Tom O'Brien. They had family reasons why they wanted right. to stay in Boston. And uh, Jeff Jagodzinski, because of his past connections uh, at Boston College and with Frank Spaziani, decided that would be a good Good thing to keep those guys. He liked what the defense did before he got there. Well, they had done so well. And on third and six, they get the complete pass to A.J. Jimerson. Yeah. But he's going to be shy. Last two third down plays. Very safe calls for Brian Hoyer. One was the check down. Right away, he threw to Ringer. Right. They got the first down that time. This was a screen pass to Jimerson that came up a little bit short. And some of the Michigan State faithful were saying we want to go for this one and uh, a few cat calls no, a lot when the of punt team comes on but we're still got 30 yeah. seconds to go in the third quarter a lot of time left play field position you're down a touchdown only this four points and these are of course people who don't have coaching contracts <laughs> silva, silva. Well, this decision. guy's got guts, doesn't he? And it was a good decision by him because if he lets that ball bounce, chances are Michigan State is going to down it inside the 10. He saw it was a low kick. He saw he could catch it and get it forward a few yards, and uh -oh. he did. He advanced the football. He was holding his left arm there for a few seconds like he was hurt. I like the way he fields punts. He waits right until yeah. the last second so he doesn't give the gunners coming down a really good opportunity to decide what he's going to do. This should be the last play of the third quarter. Ryan out of the shotgun. Four-man rush. Plenty of time. Now he's flushed. Throwing on the run, and it's incomplete. Got it right in the hands of a receiver again, but Lloyd, who earlier caught the touchdown pass, couldn't hold this one as Travis Key whacked him as soon as the ball got there. ESPN360.com, your online home for Capital One Bowl Week. to rally event get 0% APR on the 08 Gallant from Mitsubishi the fastest growing import brand in America headsets. Find all the stuff you need for all the stuff you got at your neighborhood Radio Shack. Do stuff. Lloyd Carr 
Tomorrow East Michigan for the final time as they battle Heisman winner Tim Tebow in Florida. New Year's Day at 1 Eastern on ABC. If you owe taxes or are facing an IRS lien or wage garnishment, here's important news for you. Now there's a new program that will immediately end wage garnishments, remove IRS liens, and eliminate IRS tax penalties. Call right now to enroll in the Rapid Relief Program from Advantage Tax Resolution and have your tax liabilities reduced by up to 90%. Hi, I'm Corbin Bernson for Advantage Tax Resolution. You know, tax problems can strike at any time, even if you've done nothing wrong. Advantage Tax Resolution was founded to help people just like you resolve your tax problems permanently. I'd never been able to take on the IRS myself, but I got help. I had my tax lien removed and my debt reduced 90%. Call right now to enroll in the new Rapid Relief Tax Resolution Program. It's the last call you'll need to make about your taxes. Call 800-926-9057 to find out more information about Advantage Tax Resolution's Rapid Relief Program. Welcome back to Orlando, Florida, the Champ Sports Bowl game. And we may have some potentially bad news for Michigan State. Here's Holly. was just taken to the locker room. They had taped up his right ankle. He tried to push off, tried to play. They asked him if they wanted to go into the locker room for further um, evaluation, and he said yes, so he's not in the game and not available right now. All right, thanks, Holly. Matt Ryan in the shotgun has missed his last six throws. Here's a pump fake. It's under pressure again. Ryan will take off and run with it. And he's out to the 30, stuck by Otis Wiley. Was a very versatile athlete. Ryan looked a little bit better as a runner yeah. on that one. Yeah, I mean, he's a little bit more athletic than people might give him credit for. I mean, he's not going to be confused with, you know, Vince Young or anybody like that. Yeah. But he, he does move a little bit better, and he buys time really well. He's not a, a flat-out fast guy running it, but he makes good decisions when he does run. got to remember for Michigan State they had their best pass rusher suspended academically and they've done a pretty good job getting pressure on Ryan his throw intended for Collender and he can't hold it in the flat that time Matt Ryan threw it off his back foot as he was falling back anticipating pressure and I'm not sure he had to he tried to get that ball out to Callender right away and he didn't make a very accurate throw you don't see Matt Ryan miss too many throws like that that was not a good throw for Callender. Bears set to punt. Thomas goes deep. Much more dangerous kick return man as far as his average than he is a punt returner. High short kick and he'll come up and make a fair catch for 35. 35 yard kick and no return. 14.06 to go in the ball game. During the month of November, Champ Sports sponsored an online contest challenging students to create a two minute video showing why they are a Champ Sports champion. Today, Champ Sports is pleased to award a $10,000 college scholarship to the four finalists and announced that the grand prize winner, who has tripled their prize to a $30,000 scholarship, is Rachel Somerville from Craigsville, West Virginia. Congratulations, Rachel, and a special thanks to all who entered the contest. Champ Sports, where sport lives.
OnePlus tools work at full power twice as long with a battery that fits all your other OnePlus tools. Ryobi OnePlus. Pro features, affordable prices. You'll find them only at the Home Depot. The Rose Bowl game presented by City, Illinois versus USC, New Year's Day at 4.30 Eastern on ABC. Good news for Michigan State, Javon Ringer coming out of the locker room. As they tended to what appeared to be a sprained ankle, he was limping going in and not limping very much coming back out. Underneath and first patch of the night uh, caught by Mark Dell. He's out to the 40 yard line. Herzlick on pass coverage. Nice job by Don Treadwell, the offensive coordinator, calling a couple safe throws for Brian Hoyer. They're not going to win this game just by running every play. They're going to have to throw some. They can still be heavy run, especially if Ringer's healthy and able to go again. But three completions in a row now for Hoyer, and they've all been very short ones right over the middle. Safe passes. Kalkrick is the tailback, and he'll get the toss. And Silva came flying up from the safety spot to hit him in the backfield. He struggles to get back to the line of scrimmage. You know, some safeties in college football, in fact, I would say most safeties, if they see a 260-pound tailback coming on a sweep, they're not going to want to come up full speed. Not this guy, not number 44. Watch him read and just come like a missile right in there and says and takes on the big guy with proper leverage takes him outside forcing Colcrick back inside if he hesitates at all on that play Colcrick turns up field for a positive game looks like a John Lynch kind of guy doesn't he yep Boy, oh, you're out in the flat Colcrick this time gets away Taji Morris had a shot at him the corner came up but he missed Holly Rowe with more on Ringer. Holly? Well, guys, Javon Ringer went to the locker room. I'm not able to actually confirm this, but I wouldn't be surprised if he got some kind of a pain-relieving shot because when he came back out of the locker room, he was just fine. He's been pushing off. He wasn't exhibiting that same pain that he was in before he went to the locker room, and he just told the coaches he's ready to go. So don't be surprised to see him get back in the game right here. All right, thanks, Holly. 88 yards for him on the ground. One catch. First down, Michigan State. Call Crick. See, the good news for Michigan State is with Ringer a little questionable, it's not like they have to go to a true freshman yeah. backup. They've got Coltrick, who's a senior, 255 pounds, who has played a lot of football for the Spartans. And so, uh, you know, they can get Ringer back in there, but they don't have to worry about making sure Javon Ringer is 100% before they put him back in. And Colcrick's number 10 all time on their rushing charts. Yep. So you're not going to somebody who is either inexperienced or not very good either. But Ringer does come back in on second and six. Obviously he has more speed and is more of a breakaway back. He takes the direct snap. Shakes one tackle, two. And manages to pick up a couple of yards after being hit in the backfield. Well, Michigan State able to run the football. That's what was going to be the big challenge against the number one rush defense in the country in BC. 150 yards now for Michigan State. That's the most that Boston College has allowed all season. Only twice this year did teams run for over 100. Virginia Tech had 116 back in the regular season, and Maryland had the most, 135 before tonight. And Frank Spaziani knew this would be a different challenge against a physical running game. Huge play here, third and four. BC shows blitz. They only come with four. Pass out in the flat was tipped and incomplete. Yeah, Herzlick got his hand on it, 94. He rushed from the outside position, timed his jump, and got a hand on it. Again, all the passes for Michigan State now are just safe little swing or dump offs. Nothing down the field for Brian Hoyer. Herzlick timed it perfectly and got his right hand on the football. And they had a shot at making a yeah, first down. They did. Now they will kick it away. Bates, who has been very good this year at killing the ball inside the 20 yard line, will punt to Silva. Silva signals fair catch and decoyed the Gunners. 
They stopped and waited for him, and the ball goes into the end zone. Capital One Bowl Week featuring over 20 bowl games in 12 days on the ESPN family of networks. We'll continue tomorrow night. Joe Paterno and the Nittany Lions against the Aggies in the Valero Alamo Bowl. Part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN tomorrow night at 8 Eastern. It'll be an interesting matchup. Penn State coming off a loss in their last game. Texas A&M coming off a big win over Texas, but Dennis Francione out. Gary Darnell, the interim head coach. So uh, which team can avoid the distractions? Penn State, a lot of off-the-field stuff this year that uh, kind of hung as a cloud over yeah. their team the whole season. Ryan takes off, caught from behind, and dropped by the defensive end Brandon Long, who was starting for Jonal St. Deke. The problem for Boston College is their running game has been totally, completely negated. As we see J.U. Colcrick now taking his turn going to the locker room for Michigan State. Only 24 yards rushing tonight for Boston College. That means Matt Ryan back to throw just about every down. Ryan with time throws near side and threw a bullet complete to Robinson. Brandon Robinson basically has been their only deep threat this year but he's done it with making comeback catches and then setting it up with double moves. He really doesn't have blazing speed either. Well, Matt Ryan coming into the game tonight averaged seven point one yards per pass attempt. Michigan State has done a nice job squeezing these Boston College receivers tonight. Only four yards per attempt for Matt Ryan. 42 pass attempts now in the ballgame. Ryan going deep. Ganell got away with a pass. Yes, off. he did. And he'll get a touchdown. That should have been offensive interference at least at first blush. But it turns into a 68-yard score. Didn't you think so? It looked like a push. It looked like there was late separation because of the push on Chris L. Rucker, number 29, who's a freshman. Watch Ganell towards the end. Left hand, a push off clearly. Got the separation, but another perfect throw by Matt Ryan on the deep ball. I was going to say on the previous play, you could see how strong Ryan's arm was because that was a deep out all the way across the field, and that thing got there in a hurry. But a big play here. The point after will make it 24 to 13. They've tried throwing deep. They haven't connected, but it was enough to stretch the defense. Now they do connect, and they take an 11-point lead. Despite rumors circulating online, Winter X Games 12 will take place January 24th through the 27th. Please go to winterxrumoralert.com for more information. Stunning video, MP3 sound, broadband speed, internet, and email, all working flawlessly together in one ultra-thin device. The new Samsung Blackjack 2, only from AT&T. fire. One call to Farmer's Help Point could fix that. Farmer's Help Point. Sanity makes a comeback. Red and now another priceless pep talk from Peyton Manning. What's up, friend? Heard you got a bad haircut. Don't worry, it'll grow back. 
And I've got a simple stylish solution for you. Clean part, high and tight, no sideburns, no mistakes. I've been working this too since I was like five. Trust me. And this has been another priceless pep talk from Peyton Manning. Go to Priceless.com for a personalized pep talk you can send to a friend. What a game for Gunnell. Six catches, 138 yards, and two touchdowns. And Boston College is taking a 24-13 lead. Matt Ryan showing you why he was one of the top Heisman candidates all year long. This kid can play yep. the position of quarterback. Michigan State's defense at four, seven, three and outs in the ball game. That was three plays and in the end zone for a huge touchdown. Here's the ever dangerous Thomas. Well, what a good return man out to the 37. I'm going to go back to the touchdown. I want to show you something, how Matt Ryan read the coverage so quickly. Right here with the safety here, that looks like cover two, which means this route outside is probably not going to be open. But watch as the tight end releases straight down the field, the safety hangs in here. That means it's quarter coverage, which means it's single coverage outside one-on-one -on -one with the corner. You hold the safety, so when the safety does release to go help, it's too late. He can't get over there, and Matt Ryan throws another beautiful pass to Gunnell on the deep route. The pre-snap coverage suggested that wouldn't be there. The post, as soon as he took the snap and read the coverage, he realized, I got exactly what I want. Now Michigan State cannot be really choosy. They're going to have to put the ball up a little more because the clock is a huge friend for Boston College. That's Pat Narduzzi down talking to his defense, trying to get them uh, encouraged. That was a... A very, very devastating touchdown they gave up right there. They've been right in the game, down four points. And we've got a player down for Michigan State. That's why we had the timeout with 8.53 to go. And it looks like uh, Joel Nitschman, who's been alternating with John Masters at the uh, center spot, and fortunately, he's up and able to walk off on his own. Good to see for that young yeah. man who was a talented offensive lineman, a sophomore. So this Boston College defense is, uh, they're a pretty salty group. They've got a lot of seniors. They're very disciplined. They, they don't necessarily beat themselves. They're not a heavy blitz team. They're not a heavy man-to-man -man team. But I thought they'd have major matchup problems with Devin Thomas and Kellen Davis and after early in the game they really haven't. No they've done a terrific job against the pass. They have been uh, pushed around a little bit against yep. the run but that's something it sounded like they they suspected might happen. Yeah. Because of the physical nature of Michigan State's line. And, and I think Frank Spaziani knew he said look you know that, that, that number looks good 68 yards a game rushing but let's face it we haven't really played teams like a Big Ten team like Michigan State that wants to run the ball the way that that they like to run the football. And uh, I think they knew that coming in. Now they did do a great job against Georgia Tech and Tashard Choice and against Clemson and James Davis and C.J. Spiller. They did a great job against those guys. First down for Hoyer. Wants to throw. Has a man open and missed him. Just too high for Mark Dell who tried to make the circus catch and nearly pulled it off. For Mark Dell. Silva and Rollins scoring defensively. This would be a huge possession for Michigan City, yeah. even if they can just get a field goal out of this to close within eight. It would make it a one possession game potentially. And this is where Brian Hoyer, as much as it's been a struggle here in the second quarter and on, you got to find it within yourself to stick in there and make some throws. You got to make some plays for your team. Deep down the middle and overthrown had Blair White between Two defenders had maybe a half a step in the pass was a stride overthrown. Yeah. Slightly overthrown, bringing up a third down and ten now for Michigan State. Tell you what, I wouldn't want to throw it where number 44 is because he has already picked off two tonight, giving him eight interceptions for the season. When you hear the a description of a guy who has a nose for the football, that, that's Jamie Silva. He, he has a nose for the football, and he, he knows how to get around it and make plays on the ball. 
Silva is the deep man in this defense. And the quarterback doing everything he can. Hoyer trying to keep the drive alive. He's about a yard shy. And this certainly looks like four down territory. Yeah, I, to make. I think it might be less than a yard. Yeah, I think you have to go for it here if you're Michigan State. You got Colcrick back. 255 pounds. You've run the ball for more yards than anybody against Boston College in this game tonight. I mean, as well as they've run it, you've got to be pretty confident you can get a yeah. yard. Yeah, you got to be. And they have to get it. Play action fake. Hoyer in trouble, throws incomplete. They tried to cross him up and maybe outsmarted themselves. The pressure was coming from Brady Smith and Nick Larkin. They'll turn it over on downs and Boston College will take over. athletic retailer of the Arena Football League. Champ Sports, where sport lives. Now at the Time to Rally event, get a $4,000 factory rebate or 1.9% APR on the 07 Endeavor from Mitsubishi, the fastest growing import brand in America. Stay focused for the next 60 seconds. That's all the time I have to tell you the truth about HD television, the truth your cable company doesn't want you to hear. Cable wants you to believe they're keeping up with HD capacity. They're not. But DirecTV is. Get the best entertainment and the most HD channels with DirecTV. That includes exclusive sports with games and matchups you won't see on cable. So call now for all your favorite sports, movies, and shows. And you always get your local channels. Do you know what else? Packages start at only $29.99 per month. Plus, call now and ask how you can get 32 premium movie channels free for three months. There are no startup costs, no equipment to buy, and professional installation is free. Call now. You also get a free HD receiver or DirecTV DVR upgrade from America's number one HD provider. Time's up. Make the call. Michigan State down by 11, turns it over on downs, and Boston College will take over with 7.17 to go. There's a good idea. It's the let's eat more party backing <laughs> Todd Blackledge for president. Somebody wants to get on the gravy train. <laughs> Or the gravy bowl, I'm not sure which. Well, I went back during that break and watched that play about three or four times trying to figure out who they were trying to throw the football to. I'm still not sure. It, it looked like Kellen Davis was going to the ground and then going to pop up and try to trick him. Didn't fool Boston College at all. Ryan trying to hit Gannell again, trying to go back to the well. And this time he was double covered. I just think the change in strategy in the second half by Steve Logan and Matt Ryan to attack this defense and say, you know what? They're sitting on, they're squatting on routes. They don't respect our ability to run down the field. Let's at least try. Let's at least throw it down the field. And even if we only complete one, which I think that's all that they've completed, the deep throws, it'll at least make them respect it and play a little bit more honest. Well, here's where the lack of running game tends to traditionally hurt you as they go with the uh, draw to Whitworth. This is the time where you would love to be able to work on the clock, and it's very tough for them to do that. Boston College, number six in the country, number one in the ACC in passing, but they only rush for 104 yards a game. 
And we've got a timeout with 7.02 to go in the ball game. And we'll be back after this. Hurry up, kids. Nowhere with expired credit card miles? Whew. Get Capital One's no hassle rewards with no miles expiration, no earn caps, and no blackout dates. They should switch to Capital One. What's in your wallet? Now at the Time to Rally event, get 0% APR on the 08 Eclipse from Mitsubishi, the fastest growing import brand in America. When I was just a little girl, I asked my mother, what will I be? Will I be pretty? And here's what she said. The XPS-1, powered by an Intel Core 2 dual processor. Dell, yours is here. Hey, Derek, what's the deal with the special burger? Well, why don't you try calling it by its proper name, Jason? It's called the Special Secret Double Deluxe Bistro Burger. I'll be sure to do that. How do you make it? Well, you get you some raw meat, you ball it up, and put it on a plate. That sounds gross. Derek? Hey, man, I didn't mean... You want raw meat on a plate? Got it. Switch to the network you can trust. AT&T. Get our exclusive smartphones, now only $99.99. ESPN College Football, the Champ Sports Bowl, is brought to you by Champ Sports, everything for the player and the fan. Champ Sports, where sport lives. Mitsubishi Motors and Corona. This holiday season, spread the good cheer with Corona and Corona Light. And as always, celebrate responsibly. Back to Orlando for the Champ Sports Bowl. Only 7.04 to go in Boston College with the football and an 11-point lead. Ryan on third down, trying to keep the drive alive, and he got it to his tight end. Purvis has the first down. Boy, and he got hit, too. Matt Ryan held that ball as long as he possibly could, knowing he was going to get sandwiched, and waits to the very end to get the ball to Purvis. Got hit right as he released it, but held in there just long enough to make the completion for the first down. Well, there's just a lot to like about Matt Ryan. He isn't there as a quarterback. There really is. Clock is running. Michigan State with two timeouts left. The numbers on Ryan, 31 touchdown passes this year after three tonight. Fake there. Blitz coming. Look out. The ball's loose. And Michigan State will recover at the 37-yard line. Greg Jones, the true freshman All-American, knocked it away. And big Oren Wilson was there to pounce on it. And Matt Ryan never saw him coming. Now Greg Jones is an explosive player. Here he is on the outside. He's going to just come right on the edge and rush. Nobody's going to pick him up. Whitworth took too much of an inside move and couldn't get back out to pick him up. The speed of Jones surprised Whitworth, and Matt Ryan, expecting to be protected on that play, gives up the football. Well, that should have been a block by LV. You could see Jack saying, LV, that's got to be your guy. Not able to make the block, and a huge play by Greg Jones. you got to protect your quarterback like it's your mother. who really hasn't been that much of a factor. It's taken away at the end by D. Leon Gals. Well, they've had the corner out a couple times. This time, Hoyer right on it with the throw. And it doesn't matter what happened out of bounds. The ball caught by Devin Thomas. 
And a big first down catch for Michigan State. What a nice pass, too. That's the thing, as a quarterback, it doesn't matter how rough it's been, you've got to still suck it up, forget the interception, forget the bad throws, and find a way to get it done. Hoyer in a two-score game, throws in the flat, incomplete, well behind Andrew Hawkin, and probably just as well, yeah. because he was covered. And Hoyer may have done that intentionally. Stops the clock with 6-12 to go. The numbers on Hoyer pretty anemic only 12 out of 30 104 yards and three picks but he's still in the game. Yep. And Kellen Davis the tight end has been extremely quiet. Sure His is. last catch was seven minutes in left in the first quarter. Hoyer with time now being pressured. Two defenders to the back of the end zone. That is just sensational. Now they're going to go for two. Yep, try to make it a three-point game here. I think this is the right call. Yeah, and absolutely. You have to go for two here. You got to know whether all you're going to need is a field goal or another touchdown. Right. If you kick the extra point, you have to score a touchdown. If you make the two points here, then you just need a field goal to tie. And with six minutes, you probably don't even need to onside kick at this point. Two timeouts left for Michigan State as well. What a play by Hoyer. He needs another one right here. To the end zone. Got the tight end this time, Davis. Now that was spectacular. Hoyer, who had played really miserably most of the game, comes up big when he has to. the touchdown now watch Brian Hoyer as he rolls out he's going to point to his receiver Deion Curry to uncover Curry's right here he's going to get him to to work the back of the end zone at the last minute Hoyer flips the football over two defenders I mean that, that that's just a difficult throw under duress and credit Brian Hoyer who struggled in the second half comes up with two big time throws the touchdown and then the two point conversion to Kellen Davis the tight end runs a little post route throw it high for him in the back and it's a three point ball game Paul Anderson the strong safety got lost on the touchdown yeah. throw. Very easy to do when the quarterback scrambles because you, you have a sense of timing, how long you have to cover a guy. Well, then you don't know yep. what's happening, and all of a sudden that receiver changes directions and goes somewhere else. Big play for Michigan State. God, I love to see that in a quarterback. You know, you struggle, you're having a, a, a tough night, you're throwing interceptions, the ball's bouncing funny for you. Yeah. But you get opportunities to still give your chance a team, uh, your team a chance to win, and you make some plays. Didn't hang his head, just went out and did what he had to do. Gunnell and Collender are deep. Gunnell at the 11. Gunnell from the 11 yard line. And goes out of bound near the 27 28 yard line. Coming up next. Capital One Bowl Week rolls on. The Terps against the Beavers in the Emerald Bowl. Hope you stay tuned for that. Well, again, we're back in that same situation for Boston College where right now you'd love to run the football and take time and make yeah. Michigan State use their timeouts. But you've run the ball 22 times tonight for 11 yards. So you've got to just throw possession passes or, or let Matt Ryan move the football by throwing it in order to use some of the clock. Let me play the part of analyst here. 22 for 11 is not good. No, it's really not. 
Ryan throws the out and throws it wide of his tight end, Purvis. Had him open, but missed him. I'll tell you what, who's played a pretty good ball game tonight, too, is Irvin Baldwin, number 51. He hasn't gotten a sack, but he's been around the quarterback quite a bit tonight. Again, they're playing without Jonal St. Deep, their top pass rusher. Irvin Baldwin had seven and a half sacks on the season. He doesn't have one tonight, but he's been in the Boston College backfield enough to create some disruption. In the last four games of the regular season, he may have been their best defensive lineman, played sensational football. Ryan with time, throws deep sideline. That one is batted down by Kendall Davis Clark. Came flying up, reached him around with a right hand and smacked it down away from Megwa. Tried to throw that deep comeback again. That time, Kendall Davis Clark did a nice job of breaking on the football and timing it out perfectly to knock it away. And again, third down and 10, they've run two plays. They've taken nine seconds off the clock, and the clock has stopped right now. No yeah. running game. Very difficult to work clock. Boy, Michigan State just licking its chops for an opportunity to get the ball back with oodles of time left. Blitz coming. Tipped and caught by the second receiver and then dropped. a sensational play by Purvis who had it on the tip if he hangs on it's a first down challenger touched it first Purvis appeared to make the catch and couldn't hold it Michigan State bringing pressure Ryan throwing off the back foot challenger gets one hand on it and Purvis just not able to secure the catch on his back trying to catch the deflection boy he just fought that thing yeah. The last two Boston College drives have gone 41 seconds and 19 seconds. The inability to run the ball is just killing them in the late stages of this game. Thomas is deep for Ayers' punt. Driven back to the 19, and he lost it. Michigan State finally covers up at the seven-yard wow. line. My, oh, my. A loss of 12 on the return after a booming punt of 54. We had to retreat and then just took his eye off it at the last minute. Then not able to recover at Michigan State. Very fortunate to get on that football. Look at Silva just <laughs> flying down there. He's in on everything. Yeah, he's got a nose for the ball. I mean, where the football is, he'll find it. Ryan Allison made the clutch recovery. 5.33 to go in the game. Michigan State needs a field goal to tie, a touchdown to go ahead. And now Hoyer will have to start from the seven-yard ball. Gives it off on the running play to Ringer. Well, nice DC's tackle. done a better, yeah. better job in the second half yeah. against the run. Tyrone Prue at that time, just perfect fundamental tackling. Stayed with his outside leverage, and as soon as he had a bead on Ringer, he just wrapped him up and made a solid tackle. Another senior out of Brockton, Massachusetts. Very similar to Jolon Dunbar. Both very intelligent linebackers. A lot of experience in this defense. Oh, that was well done. Boyer with the quick out to Purvis. I mean, Davis, and he is drilled. Knocked out of bounds near the 25. Let's go to Reese Davis. All right, Mike, we're just getting started. Hoping to match your excitement level in the Emerald Bowl. Evanson Bernard of Oregon State getting set to take on Maryland. Kick is going to be at 8.37 Eastern time. We'll keep you up to date. All right, thanks, Reese. We have 4.48 to go on this one. It is a first down for the Spartans. They're out at the 22. The tailback is Winger. Still enough time so you don't have to abandon the run right now. Ringer hits as he man. throws, hangs it up. Caught out of bounds. Oh. Thomas was open down the sideline, but Jerry Willette 
was charging Hoyer and he nailed him. Ball thrown outside. Oh, a little bit too far outside for Devin Thomas. Watch the left foot. Did he have it? No. I, I, he had the foot down, but before bit. he got the yeah. ball caught. Here's the hit on Hoyer as he's throwing it. Not able to step all the way through that ball. And the ball sailed outside on him a little bit. Boy, they had Devin Thomas beat on the sideline. They're, I think they're going to take a look at this. They're going to review it. I don't think it'll get overturned, but probably a good move by the officials to take a look at it. Well, you got to admire Hoyer for hanging in yeah. there. He knew he was going to get crunched. It appeared when we first looked at it that he got his foot down and then he made the catch. Foot's down, but the ball is bobbled slightly. I think when he got the ball, his foot was off the ground. Watch. Well, by the time possession. he had yeah. possession. I think by the time yeah. he had possession, his foot had been picked up off the ground. His left foot is down. But there the ball was bobbled slightly and his left foot came up. Yeah, and when his right foot hit, it was out of bounds. It was clearly out of bounds. There's the left foot, but possession has not been established yet, and the right foot is out of bounds. Remember, the call on the field is an incomplete pass, and he right. was out of bounds. You have to find the visual evidence has to be undisputable to overturn the call, and that yeah. is not. Regardless, it was an excellent throw by Hoyer under duress, and a nice job by Devin Thomas concentrating on the ball on the sideline. After video review, the call is confirmed. The ball was being bobbled before possession was gained. No catch. Be very correctly yep. called. Big 12 officiating crew here tonight. So the incomplete pass leaves us with second and 10 and 441 to go. I don't think, and I, maybe I'll jinx this now in the last four minutes and 41 seconds, I don't think there's been an offensive holding call tonight in this ball game. There hasn't. I don't know that I've ever done a game where there hasn't been one. Hoyer too high on the out. Curry being covered by Rollins. Now it'll be third and ten. Swenson, if you're looking ahead, 46 yards last year against Purdue. They're a long way from yeah. 46 yards right now. Well, and I think you, you got to be thinking if you're Mark D'Antonio also. I'm not sure that you're in four down territory yet. Four minutes and 38 so. seconds. You got two timeouts and BC can't run the football. Exactly. So I, I think you're thinking, hey, let's take a shot here, but let's not put all our eggs in the basket of this one possession. And they will have to make that decision right now as the pass is in and out of the hands of Deion Curry. Rollins again with pretty good coverage. I mean, there's a lot of time yeah. left. Four minutes and 34 seconds. Michigan State has two timeouts. I don't think this is a very difficult decision no. at all. You're going to send on the punt team. Be a little more dicey if you could run the ball, but right. Boston College has shown us they can't do that. At least not consistently. They might break a draw or something like that but just to come out and try to run it time after time Bates will kick to Silva nice punt Silva takes it out to the 35 yard line nine yard return after a kick to 52 and Ryan Allison again has made several plays yes, in special teams makes that tackle well, if you're Boston College and Matt Ryan, do you come out and try to run? I think you have to. I think you have to try to run the football. you got to challenge your offensive line right now and say, look, we have got to run the football. We've got to make them use their timeouts or at least think about using their timeouts. Jack Bicknell, Jr. is the offensive line coach. Jeff Jagosinski is a, a, a former offensive line coach. I think at this point they've got to try to run the football with Andre Callender and take some time off the clock. 
They give it to him on a running play, picking his way across the 40 out to the 43. That's a gain of eight before Greg Jones made the tackle. So now at least you've got second and third down to try it again and needed only two yards. And the clock is running. And that's the, the, the biggest thing that you want right now. Run that clock. Milk it. Put some duress, more duress on Michigan State. Second and two. Second and two, very easily can run the football again right here. Now you want to use every second on that play clock, which is down to nine. Colander again. They need to reach the 45-yard line. He's maybe a half a yard shy. Greg Jones led the charge again. Michigan State not yet using one of its two remaining timeouts. But what did you say? The, the two drives before this took 41 what? and 19. 41 and 19 seconds. This drive here started with 440 left. So they're already approaching under three minutes. Yeah. So just the fact that they ran on first down and gained eight yards, they're able to take this much time off the clock. Tell you what, a quarterback keep wouldn't be a bad call here, would it? For Not a foot. Bad one. Six foot five. 220 pounds. Oh boy. Fumble the ball, and Michigan State says they have no. it. No call yet. It BC looked like got it. Ryan got it. Yeah, Ryan got it, but they're going to have to punt the football. Now Michigan State might want to use one of their timeouts here. Holy cow, what a bad time for a poor exchange from center. Sometimes if you're a defense and you're anticipating quarterback sneak, you try to hit that center. This was going to be a reach block by the center, Matt Tennant, number 65. Anytime the center's moving to the side, a quarterback has to keep his hands and ride that center whichever way he's going. We had a bad exchange from Michigan State that, that led to a touchdown. This one costly hurts Boston College. Is it time for another fantastic finish? We've certainly had some in bowl week. It's a 28-yard field goal attempt to win the game. The kick is no good. Somebody got a hand in the middle of the field on it. Hartman from 34 yards for the game. And good. Summer's kick. Fourth down after the fumble. They had maybe the half of a length of a football to get a first down and force Michigan State to burn both of its timeouts. They've had to use one. I think they were going for a quarterback sneak, but they were going to try to run it to the right a little bit. Boy, he bobbled another one. Oh, my gosh. And they'll have to start from the four after a 54-yard punt. Let's check in with Reese. All right, Mike, about seven minutes away from kickoff of the Emerald Bowl. Ralph Friedgen and Maryland have been on fire, winning their last three bowl games by a combined score of 95 to 17. But they've got to face a tough Beavers defense in San Francisco coming last up. Last possession. What yard line? Reese, thanks very much. 2.37 to go. Still plenty of time for Michigan State because all they need is a field goal to time. Yeah, but a couple of good punts by Boston College, a couple of bad catches by Devin Thomas. They started on the seven, the previous possession. Now they're on the four with 96 yards away. Now they don't need a touchdown. They just need a field goal, but still way backed up. Hoyer. Under pressure from behind, throws, and it's caught by Anderson. Is it a pick, or was he out of bounds? No, nope, they call an interception. He got it. Anderson made up for his mistake on a previous possession when he lost a receiver in the end zone, and he picks Hoyer the fourth time he's been intercepted tonight. Not sure if Hoyer was trying to throw the ball to Devin Thomas or if he was trying to dump it underneath to Deion Curry, but... The ball sailed over Curry and short of Thomas, and Paul Anderson stepped right in between them and made the interception. That Five ties turnovers. a bowl game record with the fourth interception. 
And this was a team that had made a living on not turning the yes. ball over this year. Yeah, only 13 turnovers coming in. And now Ryan will go back to work from the 29 yard line. You have to assume they're going to run here. And being very careful with it is Collender covered it up. And Michigan State will use its last timeout with 2.23 to go. Here's Holly Rowe. Well, guys, for Michigan State, they had a wonderful bright spot at the luncheon when they had one of their players come up and showcase his talent. Backup linebacker John Mish, a redshirt freshman, just wowed the crowd. He got up and played fantasy impromptu by Chopin. Give you a little listen, guys. It was spectacular. years but let me just reiterate that was a linebacker one of the guys at lunch and said you know if it was a kicker or a quarterback I could have understood it but a linebacker playing like that that was terrific wasn't it Holly I've got that on my iPod yeah, it was really good very nice you have an iPod and an iPhone mm -hmm. yes Golly. anything with an eye in it I want it <laughs> if they ever come out with an eye car I'm buying one you have Britney Spears on your iPod too? No. No. Fortunately. Surprises me. <laughs> she she may have let out the double wide to another family member earlier. 144 to go. Third and four for Boston College. Well, there's a lot of statistics in football that you can kind of manage and maneuver and manipulate any way you want. But the one that that almost always holds true is turnovers and turnover margin. Yes, sir. And, uh, for Mark D'Antonio's team, a team that had really prided itself on taking care of the football, five turnovers tonight, really their undoing. The one fumbled snap. And the first half led directly to a touchdown after Boston College's offense had really done nothing in the first part of the game. Play clock is at 14, so they can take it down close to 50. Who's got him here? Who's, who's calling? You're the man. Hard, to, hard to overcome those kind of turnovers. Stop it at 49. And Matt Ryan has shown you again tonight why he was a Heisman candidate and the ACC Player of the Year and is sure to be a top draft choice in the NFL draft. 22 of 47 tonight, 249 passing yards and three touchdowns. And what makes it so much more impressive to me and, and what you were saying in your initial scouting report of Matt Ryan. He has done it without a go to receiver a guy who can stretch the field. He's done it without a running game. He's a guy everybody is out to stop with any kind of scheme they can come up with knowing he's limited by the personnel around him and he still gets it done. Well he was extremely accurate. He knew where to go with the football. They had a good system a good scheme. They found ways to get guys open. And, and again, he, he did it in a new system. I mean, he just started this system with Steve Logan and Jeff Jagosinski last spring. Yeah. So he had one spring ball and one summer camp, and he broke a school record for yards and touchdowns. And he is tonight's player of the game presented by Capital One, and they are going to go for it on fourth and a foot, and they will make the first down. So that's the same quarterback sneak they tried to run on third down when they fumbled the snap. It's, it's a little bit of a sneak to the right side of the formation. That time there was no bobble on the snap. And BC now can let the clock run out. Michigan State has lost six games this year all by seven points or less. I mean they were so competitive with everybody they played. Play clock at 15, so they will 
If they snap it, they probably will not have to snap it again. Maybe one more time. No, they won't. This will be the last one. And Ryan will take a knee, and Boston College will finish its season 11 and 3. And this will be the eighth straight bowl game yep. they have won. That's a remarkable record. Eighth straight bowl game they've won. Back to back 10 win seasons for the first time in school history. And the first time they've won 11 games in a season at Boston College since 1940. The final score, Boston College 24, Michigan State 21. The Emerald Bowl coming up next. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Holly Rowe and Todd Blackledge and our entire ESPN crew, this is Mike Patrick. Thanks for watching. Now let's take you to San Francisco and Sean McDonough. All right, Mike, thank you and welcome everybody to AT&T Park in San Francisco, the home of the San Francisco Giants tonight, hosting the sixth annual Emerald Bowl, an ACC Pac-10 matchup between the Maryland Terrapins and the Oregon State Beavers. Sean McDonough with Chris Spielman and Rob Stone, delighted to have you with us. And they are ready to go in this first ever meeting in football between these two schools. Oregon State won the toss. And deferred, so Maryland elected to receive the opening kickoff. And Alexis Cerna, one of the best kickers in the country, will kick off for Oregon State. Take a look at Maryland. They're going to get the ball first, Sean, and their big challenge is to air it out. Oregon State's defense will get in their grill and challenge them every single play. Short kickoff, and it is Muff at the 15 yard line. And return to the 20 by Darrell Scott, the freshman. Here's the Maryland starting lineup on offense, presented by Yellow Book and by Sean Merriman of the San Diego Chargers. The key to the Terps offense is Lance Ball and Keon Lattimore with a great one-two punch. And when they want to go downfield, they want to go to Darius, Haywood Bay. And up front with that big offensive line, look for Andrew Crummy. He was hurt last year, but he's back now and playing well. Back to you, Sean. All right, Sean, thank you. Sean Merriman, a great star at Maryland before heading on to an outstanding career in the NFL with the Chargers. Chris Turner comes out throwing, and he's on target to Jason Good. Al Afalaba made the tackle to safety for Oregon State, a gain of five. Chris Turner is the quarterback. He was third string in the preseason. But one quarterback, Josh Portis, was suspended for the year for an academic violation. And the starting quarterback at the beginning of the year, Jordan Steffi, suffered a concussion. So Turner became the starter in midseason. And like Maryland, he's had an up and down ride. The Terrapins believe they need to throw the ball downfield against this stout Oregon State defense, which is second in the country against the run. Turner, not usually a runner, but goes for about two there. Daniel Drayton made the tackle. Now let's meet the Beavers defense introduced by Beaver alum Derek Anderson of the Cleveland Browns. And for the D-line, you'll see a lot of guys play tonight, and they're all effective. Oregon State is third in the nation in sacks. And at linebacker, Derek Doggett leads the team in tackles. And for the secondary, Brandon Hughes leads the team in pass breakups. Chris, Sean, back to you. All right, Derek, thank you. There's Derek, a big reason why the Browns are in playoff contention. On third down and two, it's Jason Good again for a first down. And he lowered his shoulder and powered out near the 40-yard line. Al Afalaba made another tackle, but it's a gain of 12 for Chris Turner, a redshirt sophomore from Simi Valley, California in Southern California. He has a lot of friends and relatives who've made the trip up north to the Bay Area to cheer him on tonight. Yeah, and times he is very good. I had a chance to see him against Boston College and he was near perfect. And other times he slumps, but when he starts fast, that's a good sign for Coach Friedgen and the rest of the Terrapin, Terrapin offense. And he's starting fast by throwing the ball well. Maryland six and six for the year was an up and down season. A lot of injuries with which they've had to contend and as coach Friedgen said they want to throw it deep and that should have been caught for a big game but Isaiah Williams dropped it 
with Brandon Hughes in coverage. Ralph Friedgen in his seventh year as head coach at his alma mater, and he calls the plays as the coordinator. Well, Isaiah Williams normally will make that catch, a good athletic move to get the hips around, but you've got to be able to finish. Chris Turner actually threw the ball where it needed to be thrown on the outside shoulder away from the defensive back, giving Isaiah a chance to adjust. Maryland's had only three starters who have played every game on offense this year. 16 players on the two deep have missed at least one game due to injury. So the overall record a disappointing six and six and the pass incomplete. Intended for their leading receiver Darius Hayward Bay. There are flags down on the field. It's a Western Athletic Conference officiating crew working this game led by the referee Paul Labine. Illegal formation, offense, only six men on the line, five yard penalty, replay second down. Unusual, Maryland, one of the least penalized teams in the country, 16th least penalized team, only 44 yards per game. In flags for Coach Friedgen, who has engineered quite a turnaround at his alma mater. They had been a one bowl game in 15 years before he arrived. This is their fifth bowl game in seven years under Ralph Friedgen. From the 32, second and 15. It's a Maryland offense that is only 88th in the country in total offense. And a screen for Lance Ball, who alternates a tailback. And it looks like he might have the first down up at the 47 yard line. Tim Clark, a cornerback, made the tackle. One of the things I like what Maryland's doing is they're doing a lot of short, quick passes because you want to negate that powerful pass rush that generated 42 sacks for the Beaver defense. How do you do that with the three step gain in the, in the screen game? And when you're doing that, it forces the pass rush to slow down and take a look what's going on. Either it happens consciously or subconsciously, but it does happen when you have an aggressive front four like the Beavers have. 42 sacks for Oregon State, third most in the country, 100 tackles for a loss as a team. And on first and 10, it's ball again. Tackled by Joey LaRock. Senior linebacker, part of a strong linebacker core, all three starters for second team all pack 10 this year for the Beavers. And the sacks, a big concern for Ralph Friedgen. We mentioned the eye popping Oregon State numbers defensively, and Maryland, with an offensive line that's been banged up all year long, has given up 38 sacks, more than three per game, one of the worst in the country in that area. Well, they, they hopefully they got it together tonight with some guys back in the bowl practice to prepare for the Beaver sack attack. Five man rush well picked up that time and it's Joey Hanos the tight end tackled by Joey LaRock but it is a first down on a 12 yard pickup. They have a deep talented and big tight end core in Maryland. And Joey Hanos presents a matchup problem for LaRock at six foot eight. I played against those guys when I used to play linebacker and there's really not a lot you can do especially if he's physical. Hanos has the burst down the field yet the body to kind of box him out like a basketball player and soft hands. Hanos was a basketball player in high school thought he might play basketball collegiately had some offers from schools like Coastal Carolina and Campbell but elected to play football at Maryland. Lance Ball carries and Tim Clark made the tackle. And Hanos will come back in. He's out of Rockville, Maryland. He's 6'8. Dan Gronkowski, another one of their tight ends, is 6'6, 263. They use Jason Good as kind of an H back slash tight end at 6'3, so certainly targets to hit with good size. And Good's already had a couple of catches. He was questionable coming into the game with a leg injury. Turner out of the gun on second and eight. A nice opening drive for Maryland. A deep throw to a receiver who's out of bounds. Williams comes back in and makes the catch. And they're going to give it to him. Tim Clark had the coverage. Ralph Friedgen is sticking to his game plan, throwing the ball early to loosen up that defense. He's out of bounds and comes back in. Now, if he was forced out of bounds, then he's allowed to come back in and establish his position. Which was the call. The crowd doesn't like it. It's predominantly a partisan Beaver crowd. 28 yard gain. We do have replay here, of course. And it looks like the Terrapins are going to go quickly for a possible replay stoppage. I'm not sure Williams had reestablished himself 
inbounds. Or if he in fact landed inbounds. It's but over, it's over, it's over. It's ball for the first and ten carry of about a yard. Well, he's clearly out of bounds right there. Still They're out right. of bounds. Comes out of bounds in to catch the ball. Now look like the official trailing the play didn't have a view of it. And the other official might have been watching the ball in the air. But clearly out of bounds. If you're Ralph Friedman, you like how it's starting, and you like especially how Chris Turner's starting the game. Oh, well, dark play of the drive for Turner and the Turks. And he zings one in the end zone for a touchdown. Isaiah Williams with the reception. First touchdown catch of his junior year. Maryland has had only seven touchdown passes all season entering this one where they have a very impressive opening drive that ends at a touchdown right here a little bit of play action just holds the linebackers enough for Isaiah Williams to work behind Drayton the safety and you see a quarterback making a confident throw even though he was covered he threw Isaiah Williams open knowing his guy would make a play for him and their team. Diego Keza the place kicker to try the extra point he's perfect all year in PATs. And remain so. An 11 play 80 yard drive, and the Terrapins are first on the board. Now, our Capital One Bowl flashback. In the 2005 Capital One Bowl, Iowa trailed LSU by one with only 14 seconds remaining. Drew Tate's 56 yard touchdown pass to Warren Holloway as time expired stunned the Tigers and gave the Hawkeyes a five point victory. Tune into the Capital One Bowl, New Year's Day on ABC. Okay, what's a three-letter word for... Honey, would you run out and get me something crunchy? Crunchy? And chewy? Crunchy and chewy? And cheesy! Crunchy, chewy, cheesy. Crunchy, chewy, cheesy. And melty. Given to your cravings, it's Taco Bell's Cheesy Gordita Crunch, and it's only around for a limited time. Get yours before they're gone. Touchdown! The Under Armour High School All-America Game, presented by ESPNU, next Saturday at 2 on ABC. They use it to shoot the game. They use it to broadcast the game. They use it to produce the game. The main man on the field today is Peyton Manning. So why wouldn't you use it to watch the game? That's Peyton Manning. Nice song. <sighs> Scroll over a bit, will you? Nothing compares to a Sony Bravia HD TV because high definition is in our DNA. Anybody got any chips? One of the most anticipated matchups in mixed martial arts history. Former UFC light heavyweight champion Chuck the Iceman Liddell will battle former Pride champion Vanderlei, the ex-murderer Silva, in the most important fight of their careers. And two former UFC welterweight champions will go to war again for a third time. George St. Pierre and Matthews will battle for the interim world welterweight title. The Ultimate Fighting Championship presents UFC 79 Nemesis Saturday, December 29th, live from the Mandalay Bay Event Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, on DirecTV Pay-Per-View. Welcome back to ESPN's presentation of Capital One Bowl Week. A quick score for Maryland. That is a surprise. Oregon State has dominated its opponents in the first quarter this year. In the regular season, they outscored their opponents 127 to 16. That was the fewest first quarter points allowed at the top level of college football in the country this year. Oregon was the only team to score a touchdown in the first quarter against the Beavers in the regular season. That was in the final game of the regular season, which Oregon State won in the Civil War. Chris Roberts' kickoff comes down to James Rogers. And the freshman is out across the 30. Maryland is the best kickoff coverage team in the country just a 14 yard return. Let's meet the Beavers starters on offense. Here's Derek Anderson. The Oregon State offense starts with Evanson Bernard. He's been the most productive back in the Pac-10 for the last four years. Up front the protectors the guys the quarterbacks like 
Roy Shooting making his 50th straight start at tackle. Come on, Beavers, put up some points. Yeah, they're trailing already seven to nothing. Shooting making his 50th consecutive start. That is the school record for not only consecutive starts, but also games played. While Moivau trying to set up a screen on first down, he missed Evanson Bernard. Moivau, like his opposite number tonight, Chris Turner, was not the starting quarterback at the beginning of the year. Sean Canfield was. They were alternating at the beginning of the season, but that didn't work well. So after game three, Canfield was the starter until midseason when he hurt his shoulder. In a game against USC, Moivau started the final three regular season games. All of them wins against Washington, Washington State, and Oregon. So even though Canfield is now healthy, Mike Riley, the Beavers coach, is going to stick with the hot hand in Moivau. He comes out throwing again, and Bernard couldn't catch it, and it was almost picked off by the diving safety Christian Barner. Let's meet the Terrapin starters on defense, presented by Yellow Book and again by Sean Merriman. Up front with this talented defense, you got Dre Moore leading the team in sacks. Right behind him, you got Aaron Henderson, the younger brother E.J. Henderson for the Minnesota Vikings. And I think he has 122 tackles, which is a few more than E.J. Henderson. <laughs> right behind him, you got Kevin Barnes with four interceptions, trying to add another one for the season. Come on, defense, let's get it tonight. Yes. Henderson, his brother EJ, starred at Maryland before going on to the Minnesota Vikings. Neuval hit the ball, goes straight up in the air, and it's caught for a completion short of the first down. Wound up in the hands of Brandon Powers. And Neuval a little bit shaken up, looking at his left hand as he walks off the field on fourth down. Chris Koch is dialing up a little blitz of his own. They have a nice little stunt coming from the outside. And Foku comes in with the pressure with three coming off the strong side. Aaron Henderson takes one blocker, which frees a lane for Foku to come in and get the hit on Moival, causing a great play. The Terrapins are coming to play tonight. Alexis Cerna in his first year as the punter, a short wobbly kick and a fair catch made by Christian Varner at the 35. Just a 27 yard punt. Maryland back on offense with a 7 0 lead right after this. Do you have mice? No. We've got Swiss Family Robinson. Like the book? Shh, shh. Frank doesn't eat emerald nuts at 3 p.m. so he gets tired of the Swiss Family Robinson appear and build things on him. Shh. Ah! Stay sharp at 3 p.m. with natural energy from emerald nuts. It's that magical time of year. Get a special lease offer on a powerfully luxurious E350 sports sedan at the Mercedes-Benz Winter Event, now through January 2nd. There's never been a better time to get that Mercedes-Benz on your wish list. We need more customers. So, what? Advertise? Ask the ad guru. The first path, Yellow Book. Excellent. Yellow Book. But what about the internet? The second path, yellowbook.com. What if people look on search engines? The third path, trust Yellow Book to place your ad on powerful search engines across the internet. The path begins with Yellow Book. Business is off the charts. Wherever you look, Yellow Book. headsets. Find all the stuff you need for all the stuff you got at your neighborhood Radio Shack. Do stuff. Well, a number of things to tell you about as we welcome you back to San Francisco. Lyle Moival on the bench and apparently still injured. He's been flexing his fingers. His offense is going to stay on the field. They roughed the kicker, Alexis Serna. 
well after he had punted the ball. You see Adrian Moten right there. Had no idea what he was thinking, but the redshirt freshman guilty of roughing the punter. So that gives Oregon State a first down. The ball marched off from the original line of scrimmage, 15 yards to the Maryland 47. So now here's Sean Canfield, who was the starting quarterback for much of the year before missing the last three games with the shoulder injury suffered in their loss at USC. The only loss for the Beavers in their last seven games. They started the year two and three, had a win at Cal against the then number two team in the country. That ignited the second half of their season. They come in having won six of seven, including a win over Oregon, their arch rival in the regular season finale. Evanson Bernard tackled by Trey Covington, and let's welcome in Rob Stone. Uh, Shawnee saw Moivau working his right hand. It's not really a right hand injury. In fact, he got hit, according to the trainer, on his right elbow. The funny bone in it shooting down to his right hand, making it difficult. They were scrambling to try and find a ball here on the sideline. You'd think there'd be plenty accessible. Trying to find a ball, see if he could continue to grip it and throw it. You see he's working on the sidelines right now, seeing if he can fight through the funny bone. Yeah, the one luxury of having two quarterbacks that plays. One goes down, one comes in, and Sean Canfield certainly knows how to handle this team and this offense. They should be well positioned at quarterback for a while. Both Moivau and Canfield are sophomores. Here's Bernard, the second all-time leading rusher in school history and 10th all-time in the Pac-10. And he's very near a first down after a seven-yard run. Bernard starts the night with 3,685.